Hello guys, welcome to the Lion Go Show. My name is Redline VA, and uh, we have a great show with a lot of guests. So we will go ahead and get right to it. Right after these announcements, uh, this show is being, you know, streamed live and is being recorded, so it can go on to YouTube later. So if you do call in, that is essentially giving us the right to use your liking without you getting mad, angry, pissed off, and DMCAing us. So with that, I would like to introduce my partner in crime, Sir Strife. Strife, you there? Hello. How's it going? Eh, I've been hosting for the last two weeks, and you've been gone. Yes, you want to know why? You've been in a coma? Something like that. So, anyway. Close enough. Dude, dude, alcohol is one hell of an awesome substance. I'm just saying. Okay, it's a, it's awesome, but oh well. I thought you were going to say cocaine is one hell of a drug. Well, cocaine is one hell of a drug, but that came after. You know what? I'm not getting into my personal life with you, Strife. You, you do, you, there, you go, there you go again. That's the same. That's the type of bullshit I've been trying to get. Uh, you know what? Never mind. All right. So anyway, um, I'm going to get into our guests, and we have a bunch of theas, so I'll go ahead and invite a couple of them on right now. Uh, the people that I'm going to be introducing are Ace and Ron. And so let me see if I can get them on right now. So I'll add them to the call right now. Hang on one second. And raw. See what happens. Hang on. Raw, you there? Yep. How's it going, man? Going good, brother. Going good. All right. Now I just got to wait for Ace to get on and see if, if he can get on. And while that's dialing up, I will see if I can invite uh, Mr. Rictus Gate. Hang on one second. Let's see. Where's the whole brother thing come from? The whole brother thing? Yeah, I noticed that. It's kind of odd. Human being? I mean, 
not not in the sense of a Christian brother, no. Yeah, more like a human brother kind of thing, right? Right. Right. Yeah. That's a, it's all good. It's all about it's all about respect. Hey, Rick Descape, what's up? Not much. How are you, folks? All good. Ace, what's going on, man? Yeah. Yeah. So. Hey, uh, what's going on, Redline? How are you? It's all good. It's all good. So, Ace, uh, we are on, live on the show, and if you don't have it, I will go ahead and give you the link to it in the uh, in the chat, it. so you so you got it. Or Strife Ken. And so, yeah, so now that we're all here, I basically want to go over a couple things. As you know, there have been a lot of uh, YouTube back and forths going on, so I just want to kind of break the ice to start out with. Um, there seems to be a little bit of a accusation going on towards atheists from Christians, and also a little bit of accusations going on from uh, from uh, and, you know, Christians towards atheists, atheists towards Christian, it goes both ways. Um, but I want to bring up one issue is that, you know, Raven Wolf was supposed to be here, but I guess he's not for some reason. But he seems to, I think he's, you know, projecting that all atheists are liars. Uh, Raw, do you have any comment towards that? Like, just give me your ideas on that. No, I don't feel that all atheists are liars. Uh, what What do you think makes him say that or or maybe actually... In, it, it, he may not be saying it, but he's, you know, flaunting it in a way. Uh, I don't know why. You'd have to ask him, brother. I don't know. I don't know. Seems that. Ace, what's up? What's going on, my friend? How are you? I'm doing well. How, how about yourself? You uh, there? Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm having trouble. I did an excellent video today. I think it should... Uh, have a lot of atheists dropping to their knees. <laughs> um, I've, I've been given a, I've been given a couple of magnificent revelations for you. Oh, okay. Um, however, the video, the video is it is a I've had a bugger with it, and I, I attest this to the simple fact that the enemy, uh, when God gives us great things to give to those that are tugging on the pan leg of Christianity. The, the the enemy tries to do everything in his power to prevent it from getting to you. So I apologize. Um, I expect that a lot of atheists, when they see this video, are going to be, um, well, let's just say excited. Excited. All right. I, I don't like the word enemy. Honestly. No, no, I'm not talking it's, about it's you as the enemy. But it, but it sounds like, it sounds like you know, like in Lord of the Rings, when they refer to Mordor, they say, the evil one, or the enemy, you know, like just. Well, no, that's what that's what Christians refer to Satan as the enemy. My apologies if you thought I meant you. Uh, you wouldn't be on Skype with me if I thought you were my enemy, brother. But how would you know I'm your enemy? I just know these things. I come from a life of dealing with enemies, so I would know. Yeah, he's talk, he's talking a, about the devil. I'm talking about Satan is referred to as the enemy. Oh, look at this. It's processed. Nice. Isn't, you see what I'm talking about when you confront the enemy? You see what I'm saying, Ron? Yeah. Oh, yeah. As hey, Randy. As, con as soon as we <laughs> confronted him, look at that. As soon as we confronted him, it processed. Hey, Randy. What, yes. what issues were you having? Was it stuck at 95% or something? Um, when my video is processed, it doesn't even give me a percentage. I got the same just, thing. I, I got yeah. ninety-five percent. Like it got, it, like it took like maybe an hour for the four-hour video to get uploaded. Like you know, it got to ninety-five percent. It was there for an hour, and then it finally finished. I was like, "Dang, that was quick." Compared to mine, uploads really fast because it's absolutely awesome. I just have really badass internet connection. I mean, it just it just does. It never gets stuck at ninety-five percent or anything like that. Try Rick, uploading four-hour video. Rick, just how's it going, man? It's raw. Not too bad, Mr. Ronis. How are you? I'm good, man. Yeah? Good. Yeah. How's the, weather? How's the weather up there in Canuck? Oh, it's, it's, uh, it was actually a really nice day today, although I stuck inside sleeping most of the time. So, Are you uh, kidding me? Well, that's how I start my new video off. You're going to uh -huh. love this new video, Rictus. Well, and I know, Rictus, i got to say something to you, brother. And please, you know, I feel as though I, I, and I'm going to mention this in my new video which is called uh, Two Revelations That Have the Atheists on Their Knees. It's beautiful. Um, but 
I, I just wanted you to know that I apologize for blowing up the other day because I, I well, you had nothing to do with you, bro. But I no, felt it, like I felt like the question that was posed in the chat room should have been screened, and I felt as though that question really didn't have to come up as a question for me. What was the no, question? Uh, it was in respect to me uh, putting the five percent to the five percent of atheism and schizophrenia. You know what I mean? How you guys like to say the Christians are delusional? So I just kind of reversed it because the amazing atheist on CNN made a quote that 5% uh, are now atheists and they're on a rise. So I just kind of did a research when people started saying that I was crazy. I Wait a minute. Hey, crazy. Randy. Randy. Yeah. We're Christians. Uh, we, we, are, we are not delusional? Um, not according to my research, Rob. I, I think it's kind of crazy of us to think that that guy walked out of the grave on the, on the third day. That's kind of nuts, right? And eternal life and all that, raising the dead. It's kind of crazy, man, to a lot of people. 6,000-year-old Earth. Yeah, no, that's 6,000-year-old <laughs> Earth. you got to erase the dinosaurs. I mean, that's kind of, we're, we're, we're the crazy. The dinosaur bones to test your faith. Yeah, to these people, we're crazy, man. We're delusional. All right. Yeah. Well, but it's not, no, not a schizophrenia no, I, kind of thing. Right? I, yeah, <laughs> it, it, but but I would agree with you. We're not. But well, it depends who you talk to, I guess. Yeah, but you know, I mean, continue. I'm Wait, sorry. Wait, how did the amazing atheist get on CNN? I mean, I've never actually seen the video, but I know he was on CNN. But how did he get on CNN? Well, they put out invited. a poll. They put out a poll. They did a search for the smartest and, and most respectable atheist on the planet. And Good luck. He, he, he amazing. <laughs> yeah. What are you he talking came, about? He really? came up, he, yeah, and he came up first, second, right. third, and fourth. Now, you know why? Because they looked due to alphabetical. Uh, it was an alphabetical order. They just picked the first A they saw. It's it, it's it, the amazing atheist. You know, the only thing that he has going from is the fact that he just doesn't give a crap what anyone else says. He does what he wants. That's the only thing. But yeah. on you know, if you notice on CNN or whatever news cast he was on he wasn't his youtube self he was different he was a lot more calmer he spoke a little bit softer he wasn't like in your face screaming kind of thing well because no, he was role played he was told when you go on cnn you're told what to say we had a radio our talk show host here in canada during the sars epidemic you remember sars mm -hmm. and his name was mike bullard and he was the number one talk show host in canada you remember that rictus Yep, I remember Mr. Okay. Mike Bullard. So Mike yep. Bullard did a television, one of his television shows, he talked about when they contacted him, CNN contacted him and asked if they could do an interview with him about SARS in Canada because he was the most notary television personality at the time. And Mike Bullard said, yeah, no problem. Well, they sent him a script of things they wanted him to say. And in the script, they wanted him to say that he was walking over dead bodies on the way into the office. Well, because that wasn't true, Mike Bullard said, I'm not doing that. And they wouldn't have him on the show. And he said that on his show, that that's why he refused to go on the show. Hey, so Redline? Yeah. Red Redline, somebody asked, and, and I hate to interrupt you, Randy, but somebody asked, are we young Earth creationists? Everything all right? What's going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, are you? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, then how about this? Capitalizing on that, then, who says that you're crazy for thinking that? I would say misinformed, but I wouldn't necessarily say you're crazy. Wait, how, wait, why are you... I, I think a lot of people would say that that's crazy. Wait, but, why are you a young So artist? back to uh, the, the amazing atheist, seeming not like himself, he was doing exactly what he was told to do. Oh, regardless what the... I mean, I don't look at the amazing atheist as the king of all atheists. There really is no such thing as king of all atheists. We don't, we don't think, you know, Richard Dawkins is the king of all atheists or Christopher Hitchens. There is no really king of all atheists. I mean... You know, religion, if you look at, you know, the form of Christianity, you know, Catholicism, whatever, they got a pope, but there's really no pope of atheism, if you get if you get what I'm saying. All right. There, Who asked me that question, why am I a young earth? Uh, that was uh, Strife. That was Strife. What? Strife? Do you want me to call you Strife? Yeah, go ahead. All right, Strife. You can you can call me Raw or Bob, whatever. Um, why am I a young earth? Uh, because I believe that God is not a liar. But when did God say in the book ever that the earth was 6,000 years old? He didn't. You, you kind of got to add it up. You know, he, so he could say the earth is old, but he said that mankind is only 6,000 years old, that 
possibly. Isn't that a possibility? It is a bit, yeah. Actually, uh, I've, I've talked about that. My personal opinion is that we don't know how long Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden before the fall. So it could have been billions of years. We just don't know. It doesn't tell us. Uh, oh. And and God's uh, stop watch could have started the day that they ate of that tree. And that 930-something years that Adam lived could have started, God could have considered that his starting point and ending and not necessarily the time that he existed prior to the fall. So he could well, have been around a long time. Well, I'm curious, what the heck is a day? I mean, I mean, what what is a day to God? A day? You mean in in God's eyes? Well, I mean, you know, there was no sun, so there's no way to tell time. Yeah, so, God, I mean, well, God is eternal, so he's an yeah, eternal Yeah, I know that, being, so wouldn't so a day be it, eternity? It, it wouldn't mean anything to him. Yeah, yes. It, Exactly. So, you know, to us, time was, it's almost like when when that started, when the fall started, then the clicker started, because, let's but, face but, it, we, we only count years, because... But, but wait, Rob, Ra, but this, that kind of makes no sense, because then, you take Genesis literal, though, right? Absolutely. So, if he says first day, second day, third day, he's counting somehow. Well, yeah, yeah. So, time started then, because if you're counting days... You're, yeah. you're doing something. You're doing an action. Yeah, he even said that. He said that uh, when he placed the stars in the in the uh, heavens, he said, "Let it be for signs and for days and for seasons." All right. And for well, years. Well, so I, it was a clock. Well, I want to ask a ask a question. Um, if a day to God is different from the way that humans would perceive days, I don't remember there saying in the Bible where there's actually a ratio. You know, every, every uh, this amount of days, like every so many years is equal to one day God's time. It doesn't really say that, so. Well, it does. It does say, it says it this way, and it's not a literal meaning. Don't take it literally when he says this. It's, it's like saying, a, for example, to get us close to understanding uh, God's eternalness. He says one day is as a, as. Notice the w little word as. Says one day as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day to God. God time doesn't matter to God. Yeah. So the question <clears throat> is. The question it matters is, though, to us. But the question is though, if you don't perceive time, right? Right. God does not perceive time. Oh yeah, he perceives our time. No, I know, but no, I mean, okay, maybe, maybe, but this God, like, if you're going, if he's forever, you know, t eternal. How do you get a day out of eternity? How do you get a day? Well, it's like you know, uh, if you just like we would take a chalkboard and write out on the chalkboard one, you know, some somehow. Uh, yes, yes. God has that ability to look at both. You know what but I'm saying? But there's no. There's no time. There's nothing to, to compare it to, though. So a day to God is meaningless, in a sense. And, and Well, you said, you said uh, yeah. you know, a thousand years to God. So it, it would be a thousand years would be a day to God, right? So if God made everything... Not literally, no. No, that's, that's not it. what it means. It's, it means it's a figure as. of speech. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, a figure, figure of speech? Yeah, as. Yeah. In other words, he's eternal. It's it a matters metaphor. to us. It yeah. doesn't matter to him. <laughs> yeah, In other so words, how do, how a thousand get... years to God is, is like one day to us. Okay, so, so that, that it is. It's like one day. So a thousand years would be one day to God. So if God made the everything in, in you know, six days, which would be a thousand, that's six thousand years, plus another right. six thousand on top of that, we're looking at a maximum yeah. of around twelve thousand, correct? Uh, it depends on how you look at it, man. We're not exactly told 100%. You know what I'm saying? We're we're not told when that 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 stopwatch. The Indian picture. There you go. I I got you. The line goes show. The music's on. Every Sunday at 7 p.m. EST. Yeah, but I don't see it. There it goes. It's on right now. Yeah, I see it. There we I go. Red line, frog, froggy, Sir Striffle. <laughs> Sir Strife. Oh, you're yeah, seeing right. a replay or something? I don't know, the show that Can everyone see us now? Because I, I, I'm, I'm seeing it going live right now. Back on, sweet. Yes, okay, going I live for sure. Okay, more I ideas in oh, okay, now, skepticism now in you're back. Life. Yay! I don't know what happened yeah, there. I don't know. It just, it just went completely, absolutely batshit crazy oh, on me. Went on offline. <laughs> Look at the one guy said, "Thank glob." 
Thank glob. <laughs> nice. Rick just dropped off, Devin. I don't know where what happened. I think that may have what a what caused the whole thing to go absolutely. Oh wait, I know crazy. someone. Well, Rick just is hang back on. in the chat. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, let's see. Uh, but Rick strive can strive continues so that we can continue on with the show. Uh, you asked a question, or Raw asked a question to you. You were about to answer. You said there was a flaw in, in some reasoning or such. Try to continue that well, conversation. Well, the thing is, though, we, we do time relative to the Earth's rotation and its orbit and the time it takes to go around the sun, right? Yeah, we do, yeah. Yes, but yet God, there's, you know, well, you're th if we go back, there was a point when it was just God, right? Absolutely. So what is there for God to count or even compare to to tell time? Because time, in a sense, simplest sense, time is um, you're comparing things. You're comparing the, the distance. You're comparing the change between two objects. Yeah, it's a it's a mysterious thing. There's no doubt about it. And I yeah, would agree that's with the, that's the thing though. How some do, things we're not privy to. You know, we're no, not. No, we're just, no, but, but but that would mean then something was something like like if you go from God created the universe and time began which would make which uh, also you know. since uh, Rick the skate dropped off I'm gonna invite someone else his name is oh, uh, wait, Rick. I got someone you yeah I, I already got somebody I already got someone asked first you remember I we, know, but we I got we got people lined up don't worry about it so let's see what happens yeah like one of one of the guests said uh, uh, God works in mysterious ways you know the the way that I look at it and, and I genuinely do look at it this way. I'm not just blowing smoke up your rear end. Uh, if we were to know everything, God knows, it would just explode our heads, man, in this current form that we're in. That would, so, get, that would be kind of boring. Well, I don't think it's going to be boring once we get there because we're no, going to no, have... No, no, I'm no. Saying, I'm saying if you knew everything. Well, yeah. You're, yeah, that's a good point. Because I think you know once I mean, we're what's in, the point? What's the well, point? Well, I think getting, it. I think yeah. it's going to be a, a a total unfolding, a continuous unfolding of wonder and information, and you know we're gonna we're gonna get to know our our dad, our God, our Father. Yeah, yes, but God knows everything. So what is? There's no wonder for him. There's nothing for him. Well, look at it like this. When you meet, like, we've just met for the first time today, and you, you don't know a whole lot about me. I mean, I've, I've got, you know, 300 videos on YouTube you can go watch, but that'd take a long time. So even if you did watch Do It That Way, uh, you'd find out something about me. But if you talk to me, it takes a while to get to know somebody. So we've got forever to get to know God. I mean, he's, he's that interesting. So I don't think it's going to be boring in that sense. I, I think it's going to be wonderful. No, no, I'm saying from, from in my sense, if I was in his position to know everything, oh. what's the point of oh. knowing everything? Oh, if you were God. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. That's a good, hey, man, you know what? I think that's one of the reasons he makes things. I think that's one of the reasons the he, universe yes, is here. He, yes, but does, <laughs> he got but, bored. <laughs> yes, but does, but does he know everything he creates? Does he know everything he creates? Like, like this, like this. Yes. Does, yes. Like this. But Does everything that that would that anything that he makes, he had knowledge of before he made, right? Yeah, absolutely. So I wouldn't that mean that that thing he made technically existed always, just like him? In his mind, maybe. Yes. Yeah, so in a sense, I don't know, but I don't know if I can absolutely one hundred percent say I know the mind of God. No, no, so, no. I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying, does it follow though? If if God makes a dog, just just do that, right? Right. Before he made the dog, he had the knowledge of making a dog, right? Yeah. Did he? That means he always had that knowledge of making a dog because there was no time before God. There was no, you know, it was eternal. Right. So then, that knowledge of making a dog was eternal, just like God. Yeah. And but. There's one thing left out. He had the knowledge of it, and he had it in his mind, but he didn't do it. And when he did it, this is what we have in Genesis, the actual physical event of doing it. So does God it's, know every, Wait, wait, but does, but does God know anything possible? Does God know anything possible? What do you mean? Like, can God sin without sinning? <laughs> no, there's no such thing as, as God sinning. 
You know what I mean? We well, the Bible. I mean, I mean, technically, he defines what a sin is, right? Yeah, he sets the parameters of it. Absolutely. So technically, he, he could sin, but then it's not a sin anymore. He could do anything he wants to do, but his character does not allow him to do certain things, like lie, for example, or sin. How would you that know would that, feel? though? Oh, the Bible says that. Wouldn't well, that no, no, just be an appeal no, to an authority, how, though? No. How would you know if How would you know if he doesn't lie if all he tells you is a lie? Let's put it this way: if if that is not the case, if I am incorrect, we're in a world of hurt. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, I would say it doesn't matter either way. No offense, but no, none taken. And uh, you know, and and this is a good subject. I mean, if if Ace and I are wrong, that means uh, there is no eternity, there is no afterlife, there is no God, there is no Jesus, there is no forever. Then uh, we should be the most miserable men on the planet because wait, 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 we, we wait, would. Can I ask out. a question? Sure. What? You finish. That, that we would live out our lives thinking and following yeah. a lie and then get there and there's nothing there. Yeah, when, we can hear you. You know what I mean? But I am, I'm 100% convinced that God is there and he's not a liar and he's not a lie and I'm looking forward to being with him. Whip, you want to say something? Yeah, can I'll you guys hear me right okay? Yeah, we, we, we can hear you, Whip, just fine. Okay, um... There's so many things, but I, I guess the glaring gap in all your statements, to me anyways, is that I would, I would want, I'm wondering how you bridge is how you get from just believing that a God exists, some deity out there, some creator, some general kind of creator of the universe, to Christianity, to the Bible is true, and that's the guide of the Bible. In other words... Yeah. Yeah, I know. What why do you, what what is your what if any reason do you have to suppose that the Bible is a accurate account of God? Let let me go back to where I first met Jesus Christ and keep it as very as brief as the thirty second Reader's Digest version that I can. The I was twenty years old, home on leave from the army. Wait, uh, you're I saying grew- you met Jesus? Yeah, that's absolutely. how you're starting off this story. Absolutely. And and this is in how. In what I, sense? And this okay. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> okay. And I was I was home on leave, and I was uh, about to have sex with a girl that I had known prior to going in the army, and we'd had prior relations together. Uh, she, as soon as we were about to do it, she she looked at me. She said, "You know what, Bob?" She said, "Lately, I've been thinking about Jesus." Instantly, he was in the room. And in what sense? In a spirit. Uh, like, could you see him? Warm? No, 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 no. Okay, so then, no. in what sense was it, he suddenly there? He put it this way: uh, if I had to describe it, I was my knees were knocking. So I you was, felt a tingling in your knees? No, 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 no. You no, interpreted no. that I, as Jesus. I, being I, I felt a godly presence in the room a spirit of a holy creator was in the room and i was instantly convicted of my sins so you had a you had a just very powerful name, emotional experience is what you just said yeah 33 years ago and so you're in, so that's when you say you saw or not saw but you met jesus you're saying you had a very strong feeling inside of you uh, it, it was inside of me. It was outside of me. You can call it wherever you want. There was but a it feeling was outside of you. Yeah. Oh yeah. It, oh yeah. She felt mean? it too. She felt it too. Trust me. But I know you don't. And it, and this is just you know I could be no, crazy. I, I, oh, I completely agree. But I don't see how you interpret that as Jesus, just because you had a, a a very euphoric experience. Well, you know, well, I, I didn't, didn't know that as Jesus. Well, here, here's why. Because after, you know, before that, prior to that, I had never read any of the Bible or any, you know, any had any religious training whatsoever. And I had a sudden urge to read the Bible. And as I did, that same presence would come on me from time to time. And he led me and, get, and guided me through the Word of God. 
It wasn't just that one experience. There's been so other times. So every that time you, that you think about and read the Bible and think about Jesus, you have a very emotional experience. You could call it emotion. I call it a rebirth, a spiritual birth. You know, Jesus is real clear in, in, in John chapter 3. He said you have to be born of flesh and of the spirit. There's two births that, you, that have to occur in someone's life. And until you have that spiritual birth, you're not going to believe a word I'm saying. Sure, but all you've given us is that you had a very powerful emotion. You had, you had a words. feeling that really swelled up inside of you. That's your and words, that's not mine. What would you call it? Or I mean, how I was born again. I was born again of the Spirit of God. I mean, we but can that's... we can all feel the same same thing, like a like a powerful feeling whenever someone listens to a really really awesome awesome music, you know, an awesome song, that kind of thing. You know, we yeah. all have have that one feeling that you sure. know, it's like sure. yeah, I know what kind of thing. I know what he's yeah, talking the, about. The point is, I... it's a complete non sequitur to go from that to therefore. First off, what I asked you was, how do you bridge the First, the claim that a God exists to saying that the God described in the Bible is the God that exists. And all you've given me is this emotional feeling you have when you read the Bible or you think about Jesus. You, no. I mean, call it whatever you want, but let, let, let all you describe in real terms is a purely emotional experience. Uh, and I can have purely emotional experiences, and <laughs> it's, that, more, that, it's, it's more than emotion. All right. Let me chime in for a second. All right. I want. I, I want to give. I want to give uh, Ace the mic for for a sec. So Ace. Uh, yeah. Ace, go ahead. Yeah, I want to. Now you got to bear with me, gentlemen, um, because I I have a feeling you guys are lacking in something, and this isn't it isn't meant as a disrespect. So please don't take it as one. Uh, I'm going to explain it to you in a sense, and hopefully you can gravitate to and grasp. Um. Do you believe that there's such a thing as blind people? Yeah. Okay. Of course. What, what do you, th do you think that the feeling that you claim to get when you hear a great song would be even close to the feeling that they would get if all of a sudden they got sight? They've been blind their entire lives, they're 38 years old, and all of a sudden, boom, the eyes turn on. And no. all of a sudden they get, would, would you have the same feeling as the new song you just heard? I'd say no. It may be okay. different. It may not. Okay. I'd say no. Okay. It varies okay. to the person. I, I want, if you're going to talk to me, you got to be honest. I, I can honestly tell you that I've heard some really good music. That's an honest years. answer to your honest question. Okay. If you were to ask an honest question, okay. I mean, that's, well, a, that's asking, a pretty horrible question. Okay, that's okay. But here's one of the point I'm trying to get to. If somebody had no sight for 38 years of their life, and then all of a sudden... They just got sight miraculously. They could see everything no different than you and I. The feeling that they would get would be undeniable and not even comparable to any other feeling that you might think you're getting when you hear a song. I can I can almost guarantee you that. Wait, with that being said, no, I'm almost done. With that okay. being said, with that being said, when you're born again and you get the feeling that that my very very good friend Ra is talking about, it is a very similar feeling where all of a sudden it's like a light goes on and you get this spiritual understanding of things that you had no clue of before or oh. things that you may have denied. Now, here's the reality. For whatever reason, and I'm not God and I'm certainly not going to profess to be, but for whatever reason, you guys may not have that yet. It doesn't mean you're not getting it. I've but been I'm born again. You, but At least me and Red have been born again. You've been born and again. I, I would say so I've been you, born again twice. So. so how do you deny it? How do I deny what? If you if you've met Jesus, if you know Jesus, it's an emo it's a man. feeling. It, it, no, it, no, it's, it's beyond a, a feeling, brother. No, it's really not. No, 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 if you no, be no, honest no, 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 with yourself. One it's at a really time, not. please. No, one at a time. A rub, and, a rub and tug is a feeling. I'm talking about something beyond your ability to even explain, which is why I'm stuttering through this with you. The reality is, is that a spiritual awakening is, it, all of a sudden, most everything that you thought this world was, and most everything that you thought to be true knowledge of the world, all of the stuff that you've crammed in the four corners of your head, all of a sudden are now in question. Because now, Amen. you've got this spiritual awakening where you go, wait a second, oh, what? And it's Amen. a completely different situation, brother. Now, I'm Amen. not going to preach that, I'm going to preach to you. And I'm going to tell you this, that, that God 
is coming for you, bro, and you're going to get the light turned on, and that's why you're, if you watch my video I just put up today, you're going to see what I'm talking about, because there's no such thing as an atheist or an agnostic. Everybody's a seeker. We're all seeking. Well, and I, I'm telling I you, seek, cause I was if you seek, if you seek, you will find, bro. Yeah, Strife, you, you can go next, Strife, you can go I, next. I was never a Christian, ever. Good. Okay, Maybe. Okay. well, I was, and I think Red was too, and I'm no stranger to Catholic. what you're talking about, Ace, so you can sit there and, exp you know, <laughs> sit there and wax poetic about what it's like to be born again, but I'm, I know exactly what it's like. And, if, if, and if you want to say, if you want to say that it's something more than a feeling, I'm, I'm open to hear what else you think it is. Okay, and so how you could ever you possibly, question. how let you could possibly you say that. There. Wait, wait, what's your name, Wit? Let me ask you a question, Wit. Uh, do you know uh, Sir Strife? Do if know somebody him? said to you, if somebody said to you, have you ever heard of Sir Strife? Okay, have I you ever met yes. Sir Strife? Do you know okay, him? I would say no. Okay, do you know your mother? <laughs> yes, I do. Okay, so how could you know Jesus Christ and then all of a sudden not know him? Either you know Because Jesus I never Christ really did don't. know him. Then you in, weren't a Christian, brother. Sense. Then you weren't born again. Then you weren't born again. Sorry. Neither, I think neither, I think we'll, neither do you, though. I neither think do yes. you. Oh, yeah. Yes, okay. One at a time, please. Listen, 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 listen. Listen, this is what I'm saying. You're I'm telling not, me I've never met him. No, what I'm saying is I've had the exact same experience that you oh, guys yeah. are talking about. Oh, yeah. You oh, want yeah. to call that ex listen, you want to call that experience meeting Jesus. Insofar as the experience you described is synonymous with meeting Jesus in that sense, then yes, I've met Jesus. But in a strict uh more clear precise language, no, none of us have actually met Jesus. What we've actually had is very powerful I emotional have. experiences. I have. I'm going to bring uh, two wait, wait, other wait. theists into this call to maybe you know shed some light on it, see see what their opinions are. So continue the conversation. Just know that they are coming into the call right now. I was going to say when you say you know somebody, the thing you don't know is you can't be them. So you're missing something. You're not you don't know them fully because you are not you them. And look, his question. Wait. His question was perfect because it, it displays the complete equivocation happening here. He says, do you know your mother? I know my mother in a very specific sense. And then when you say you know Jesus, it's a completely different sense. If, if, if you're claiming that you know Jesus in the same sense, in other words, the same definition that you're saying you know your mom, then you're saying that you've actually physically seen Jesus, you've touched him, you've heard him, etc., etc. But you've already admitted that's not what happened? What happened? When did I admit that? Well, Raw did. Wait, no, no, hold a second. You want to? Don't talk for people, brother. You don't talk I'm for me. What Raw said? Yeah, Raw said I he said. Did not I see said that. Jesus. He didn't. He didn't touch him. What he had was a very emotional experience. Laying no, that's there. Your See, words, not please. mine. You're putting words into my mouth, brother, and I didn't say that. You you so said you emotion. I as, said a Holy yes, Spirit. Yes. Hang on, okay. hang on, guys, guys, both of you, please. Uh, inspiring and uh, jo Jonathan uh, Rats. Uh, I, I, I want to get your guys' input on this. Uh, inspiring, I would like you to go first. Got anything to add? Um, I, 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 okay. Um, <laughs> I no. feel as though the theists in here are kind of arguing from the existential experience standpoint, kind of the personal experience. And that's really not the direction I would, thought the show would go in. Johan and I both would not necessarily want to argue from that standpoint. I mean, following from Kierkegaard, I mean, existential experience um, miracles would definitely be more of a personal experience. I wouldn't really argue them on an objective standpoint. Uh, Johanna, would you uh, kind of agree with that? Yeah, I mean, I've personally seen and experienced things that I would agree are, you know, supernatural and so forth, but I can't use those in arguments with atheists. Yeah. So, I mean, but, like, our, our general aim is, I mean, the show topic was, do atheists have a counter for faith? And we kind of wanted to offer a little bit of science, a little bit of the a new emerging exper um, experiments coming out to kind of argue that, yes, in some standpoints, the way the um, atheist has his position is definitely relying on some faith in a lot of ways. All right, so w would you say it's like, it, all right, so what, what kind of faith do we have or what do we put faith in? Okay. okay. Is, um, go ahead. Yeah, you go ahead. This is the very last thing that you would ever think to question, but it's almost certainly false. It's going to sound a little insane, but the physics is pretty clear, and the philosophy is also pointing in the same Brad, direction. Are you going to do the holographic universe thing no, again? No, 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 I'm not going to... Drive, don't interrupt him. 
we're going from a much broader perspective here. I can actually argue that same, if I take the holographic universe off the table, I can argue that same conclusion from six other different angles from the physics directly, including four of them which are directly verified by physics now, by experimental physics now. All right, then. So we have we have one one case which is. You thought I was trolling you the other day, remember? So strife. I oh strife. Oh, uh, last last week you thought you thought I was trolling you when I said that you know bring the holographic universe. I wasn't actually. I mean, no, it, it sounds crazy. No, because we heard this. We heard this right, before. Right, right, right. And... There was there was more experience you haven't heard though, and they're they're actually quite they're quite unequivocal. I mean, I've I've seen atheists that are in the field that take they don't they don't attach theistic implications to this, but the the conclusions are quite um, quite solid. Yeah, Lee Smolin yeah. coming out uh, wrote a book called Three Roads of Quantum Gravity. Kind of agrees in this along the same perspective. All right. So, all right. So we have. Uh, all right. So, John, if you have an argument that some that that you would like to make, go ahead and make, it, and then we'll go from there. Oh, sorry, all right. So, you think that things actually exist when you're not looking at them, right? Everyone does. As far as I know, yeah. Okay. I don't. Uh, there is. Okay. There's actually a uh, experiment done in 2007 that Zeilinger did that demonstrated that things, the physics can't work that way, right? That uh, if that was the case, there would be non-local hidden variables and we don't find them. Now, that was an indirect argument. It, 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 it ruled out any other possibility, except it didn't actually, so it was direct in that sense, but it didn't actually see it in a direct sort of sense. Later in 2011, they had another one, which was a test of the Koken specker theorem. And they basically, remember the, the magician's trick where you have three cups and a ball, and no matter which cup you guess, you always get it wrong? Yeah, so you always pick the cup that doesn't have the ball, yeah. Yeah, they've discovered that actually works in reality at the quantum scale. Now, what that means is, actually, I've seen Zeilinger in interviews say this, the experiment, and basically the, par the particle can be in a number of different properties before you measure it. If you assume, you're allowed to assume it could be any, any one of those properties, okay? If you do that, you have to set the wave function up in such a way that it gives you incorrect um, predictions for your experiment. Meaning that the the particle did not actually have any of those properties before you measured it, mm -hmm. which is is crazy. This is is what they call counterfactual definiteness, which is the scientific. It's 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 also referred to as objective realism in philosophic sense. I've actually seen a uh, a paper in I think also 2011 saying that um, quantum mechanics predicts um, things that are incompatible with objective realism, and basically this is saying that there there quote unquote is no spoon in a sense. All right, so there's some, there's some things that in physics and in science that we simply do not know. Not, not that we don't know. We, know, we actually know the state. The state is defined by the wave function. It's not that we don't know it and we will know it or might know it in the future or maybe we can't know it in the future. It's saying that if we, even if we are to assume that these do exist, okay, mm -hmm. like in the past, if we assume that they are actually there and we set the wave function up in such a way that you know, as though it was there, just assuming that it was, we didn't, we have, we just assumed that maybe we didn't have enough physics to understand it, but we could just assume that it was anyway. We set it up that way, we still get wrong predictions for the experiment. Right. So how, in the, how does this in any way sh show evidence for a God? Oh, well, what it shows, and this is, this is one of the experiments, the other one, you can argue directly from entanglement, this is not, you know, theoretical holographic universe stuff, you can argue directly from entanglement that space is an illusion. <laughs> Material is an illusion. Okay. Well, we use materialism, don't we? Yeah, we use it as a practical matter, but you, everything you do in materialism, you can also do in idealism. That would what do you mean by uh, illusion? What do you mean by illusion? What, what, you're, you like solipsism, right? I'm not a solipsist. No, I know, but it's, no, I am. it's really similar. It's similar. Of course, not it's really. Kind of right? it's, he's, already, he's already used the blasphemous word in solipsism, which is illusion. Yeah. The, it's, yeah, I, I blasphemed against materialism much way the way you guys take the, uh, the blasphemy challenge against the Holy Spirit. Yeah, but, it, but, but no, 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 position, I didn't say materialism. <laughs> but that I position, I would say, is absurd, solipsistic, an idealistic position because right, right, but you don't know anything exists. Science thing. You're not. Actually, we do know something exists, but it's not material. How do you know? It's quantum because of the experiments. The yes. experiment coming at one and I, I can argue this from philosophy, but I can also argue this. I can dump all the philosophy. You can, you know... You could say this is oh, metaphysical. I could say it's not metaphysical. It's physics. There's an article. Oh, you can't. To, to fill in a little bit of gaps, there's an article in Physics World called Quantum Physics Says Goodbye to Reality, which talks about the Anton Zellinger study. There was also a recent one that came out in 2011 by two of Zellinger's grad students, 
that demonstrated this happens on the macro level. So yeah, there is some studies out that have been confirming this. And they've confirming what started. exactly? Confirming what? Stuff isn't there when you're not looking at it. Really? Again, how does this prove a god? How does this even show that there's a god? <laughs> okay. well, ho well, what we're doing, well, hold on, what we're doing is we're arguing that basically materialism is based on faith, that the idea that if matter does not exist, it emerges from an information pressing above uh, space, time, is fundamental. So the idea that materialism is kind of based on faith thanks to the new quantum physical experiments coming out. Now, what is, what is that, quantum, that doesn't what refute is, materialism at all, by the way. That something isn't there when you're not looking? How does that refute materialism? The entire point of materialism is that there is an objective reality out there. No, no, it's not. Okay. Materialism is that things are that we that things are made of energy. That things are made matter. of physical matter. Those things don't exist when you're not looking at them. That doesn't we matter. Interact that has with nothing it. to do with materialism. The point is that, okay, Zeilinger actually pointed this out. Let me find the quote exactly. But he pointed oh, out that you can only do observations. You can't do matter. Anymore. You're confusing consistent, objective <laughs> substance with materialism. Materialism is no way committed to saying that matter exists in one state hey, objectively a, all the time. Which can seem, I have a question. Would you agree that matter can exist without space-time? If there's no space for something to exist in, can there be matter there? I, I mean, first, I would ask you what you exactly mean by all these terms. All I hear is a lot of jargon thrown about in order to try to justify some very vague idea in order to, I guess argue for some kind of justification, just some, some way to justify the idea of imma immaterialism or something. Well, so what the hell, what, I mean, given the way I understand the words that you've just said, space and matter, no, that's, it's not possible. Matter has to exist within something, and that within something is what I call space. Correct. Well, they also, they also said that flight wasn't possible uh, not too long saying, ago. I'm saying on the purely on the pure semantics of it. Yes, I agree with you on the semantics of it. Now, here's the problem. With but obviously, you must be using... Uh, the point is, you must be using different semantics if you're going to say that space... No, I, I, the thing is, I agree with you on your semantics. What I'm saying is is that I, I brought that up as a rhetorical point. I okay. agree that matter needs space to exist in. However, I can argue from three different lines of argument that space does not exist. One from... <laughs> space love to hear that. Two from if space okay? does not exist, Jonathan... Jonathan, if mm -hmm. space does I doubt not that exist, can. then why are you not everywhere? Ah, uh, my wave function actually does extend everywhere. But it, it, it organizes more in one location. Much like a, a computer program... Oh, why does it organize in more than one location? And isn't that the holographic wave universe Wave function does again? not extend infinitely. That's oh, one God. of the arguments. The other two arguments come from loop quantum gravity and quantum it's entanglement. pseudoscience. This is... It's not... It's not... It's not... Wave can see? It is not Just saying that the I'm wave function... You obviously don't understand what the wave function is. The wave functions, they, they, they curve off. They mean, it's an infinitesimal amount of probability that extends out any which direction. It doesn't extend infinitely. Uh, yeah, I'll look at the word wave the, function. It normalizes, it normalizes to a finite value, yes, but it does actually extend infinitely. So you're not everywhere. Your there is still space in every, sense of the not, word. Not everywhere, no. Okay, you're right. That's not a problem, though, because in virtual reality, you're not everywhere either. You're but, but you're presupposing your answer to begin with. It's not evident if you presuppose I'm, I'm your pointing, answer. I'm, I'm pointing out that there's nothing semantically wrong with the concept. But, of but what's the general argument here? That you're going, you're going to somehow refute materialism, and that's somehow an argument for God? Not in itself. That I mean, I don't see... That. That's the first. I mean, okay, here, here's the argument for God that I could... This is a purely philosophic one. I think, I uh, know inspiring philosophy agrees to me, and there are probably some theists that disagree here, but everyone else would probably pretty much just, um, agree that substance dualism is logically impossible, correct? What? Substance dualism. There are no ghosts in machines, correct? You mean, you mean mind-body problem? Yes. Like there's, not, like, there's not like a ghost inside of a... The mind's right? made of matter. That's my answer to it. Okay, that's your answer. So you do not believe that there is a second substance, right? No. And that's good, because I agree with you on that point. Because how would you know? Can I? Good evening, gentlemen. Yep, Brian Can J., I? go ahead. Hi, Brian. Right. Can I just make a quick point about the existence of matter? Sure. Um, if we look at the uh, just the simple double slit experiment, um, we've kind of demonstrated that matter, stroke energy, which we know are um, inter-translatable, um, exists at a quantum level as a collapse of a probability waveform. So 
by that definition, um, yeah, matter exists as a condensation of probabilities. Would you say energy and it, energy could consist of, of mass? Mass could become, you know, like... Energy and matter are interchangeable. No, no, mass. It's mass, not, not matter. Mass, I mean, mass is effectively matter. That's yes, the, there, yes. There is no matter in the equation, the mathematical sense. Mass is what you would use. Yes, yeah. yes, that's, that's what I was saying. But yeah. you could... I mean, ma energy, mass, mass, mass and energy are interchangeable. Matter yeah. energy is interchangeable. They're the same thing, just in different forms, just in different states. E equals mc squared. Yep. E equals mc squared. Mm -hmm. Famous yep. equation. It would explain and a lot of things in the scripture. A photon does not a photon does not manifest as a particle or a wave until its behavior is observed. Also, isn't a photon kinetic energy in motion? Pretty much. It would explain right. it would explain a, a lot of things. A photon is a rudimentary particle. And, yes. And uh, strife strife uh, uh, raw what what was that? Well, I was I was just saying if there if we are truly in some sort of a matrix or interdimensional universe uh, it would explain a lot of things in scripture wait can, can like, I give you one like, question like, like, what, that? like what I'll give you one you'll like this one okay go ahead okay. John. No, wait wait Remember, can, can no, I ask no. a raw question go ahead Hang on. Uh, I was going to say raw by is heaven in the universe oh. well Jesus said <laughs> Jesus said this <clears throat> he said uh, it is within you okay but so we're does that mean just does that does that mean you collapse into a black hole when you die? Kind no, of? It, it means I, it. Uh, if you I say, can tell you something about this. If, but, if you say yeah, spirit, okay. it could just as easily be dimension. If I, I mean, say I'm you saying, need to be born, we were listen when G, when Jesus said in in John three, he said you have to be born of flesh in the physical, and then you have to be born into spirit. It suggests yes. to me that it's another dimension. And I suggest that that is a God dimension. Yes, that yes. Well, we already heard. discussed this, Bob, and we and we that, we came to the conclusion that just as equally valid an interpretation is that that's differentiating between just being alive and being sentient. I was gonna say I was gonna say that yes. you by default believe in the matrix in a sense because in a sense. there's another dimension. Yes, it's terminology, okay, that we're splitting hairs on. What I'm suggesting... Yes, yes. But, yeah. But what I'm I suggesting say, is that Jesus is saying the eternal. Now, think about what he said. I'm going to give you eternal life. Anyone that believes on me, I'm going to give them eternal life. If that's the case, then that makes a lot of sense that we drop this physical, what is seemingly not so much... Uh, a, a reality it's not the realest place on the block and we're gonna we are gonna put on the the eternal life which is the realm of of reality I was gonna say what is life if it's eternal I you know if I chop off my leg or my arm I'm still me so it's not this body I know that there is no, an no, inner, no, no. there is an I, inner me and that spirit no, within no, me that I was, soul I, is is what I would say he's leading us to. So but I was saying pretty much that heaven, in a sense, is a meta is in a different place, not in the universe, right? I, I don't think that it's any other Fire place that we could space. understand in this current mindset. What no, this young young man Jonathan is trying to explain, and I think Brian agrees, is that it's it's science now is is saying that it's very, very possible that there are multiple dimensions. And I agree. Well but you know but what no way in no way, shape or form is science saying that any of that stuff indicates a deity or a God in any way, shape or form. No way who is um, well, we're, we're not, but at the end of the day it's not saying categorically it's impossible either. It can't. Well, that's correct, but there's certainly nothing that indicates that there is a God. Nothing. Well, we're not I, I, disagree. <laughs> I would disagree. I think I'm an indication. I think Ace is an indication. Well, what, we're, what we're trying to do is argue from the standpoint of atheism, does it have to rely on faith? Does materialism have to rely on faith? And uh, Jonathan was about to get a little bit into that. Or, sorry, <laughs> Johannan. Sorry, everyone was saying Jonathan. I said John, it's Johannan. Sorry about that. I actually have a question for you, Hannon, because uh, I was listening in earlier. 
and um, it sounds to me like um, he has a fairly good grasp on things quantum. So I, I'd just like to ask his opinion on the theories concerning um, the uh, theoretical 11 perpendicular planes required for gravity to work. Superstring theory? Yeah. I, uh, I, th I actually, it's based on Kaluza Klein theory, which was an extension of Einstein's general relativity. It originally, he, everyone here, I think you've probably seen on NOVA how they showed that space can bend in into time, and it's like a black hole that creates gravity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. What Kaluza did, Theodore Kaluza did, he said, let's imagine this in five dimensions instead of four. And the equations he got were identical to Maxwell's equations. And so he, from this, he concluded that five-dimensional space-time curvature is equal to electromagnetism in much the same way that four-dimensional space-time curvature is equal to gravity. And then from there, it went on, and they showed that you can't just have a fifth dimension. You have to add six extra dimensions as well to make the math work. Otherwise, the, the cross parts don't work. And um, from this, we get... The, uh, the modern superstring theory with 11 dimensions. And so I actually, I would buy that, actually. I mean, yeah. It's not so, proven, but it, I, it, it's... No, it's yeah. Possible. I mean, we've, we, we've theorized it. We've, you know, yeah. we, we, we've, we've condensed the mathematics of it. Right. So if, if that is actually the case, and one of the things that we do know to be, um, air quotes, true, is how maths works. Um, and... I would posit that, given that we are uh, ex experientially limited to three perpendicular planes, um, with some gray area surrounding time as to whether that's an actual dimension in itself, or an emergent property of movement within one of the physical planes. Um, Given that our experiences are limited to the three, you know, up, down, forward, backward, right. left, right, right. planes, mm -hmm. it, from that it kind of follows that um, there are eight, possibly more, perpendicular planes that we're not privy to. As, as, as explained when Carl Sagan went through the, um, trying to explain a three-dimensional object to a two-dimensional being and going into f um, four physical planes things like uh, I think it's the tesseract right. and, you know other geometric multi-planular shapes and again consist consistent with calculus Right. This is all well and good, but where's God in this? This is all easy. This right, is all, all right, natural. All right, all right. The point that the, the point that I'm getting to with that is that that gives us a minimum of eight planes of existence, physical planes of existence that we are not able to comprehend. Like what he's saying, I think, is that um, it still doesn't even does give us the God directly. No, okay, I'm going to try. And, no, it doesn't lead us to I'm God. Gonna, Directly, I'm going to but it at all. Plenty of space I'm in the room. I'm going to add to this. Okay, now that's that's one weird thing in physics. Another weird thing is discovery that space time is actually an emergent effect. Now we see this with, um, you know, Eric Verlin with entropic gravity and so forth. A very famous physicist from Germany. But when you go here, okay, that's the first half of it. Okay, um, you're right. It doesn't get you God directly. You can extend that with more physics and more stuff to get to a God, though. That's what I'm getting. Uh, oh. at. Okay, I'm going to tell you what that physics is in a moment here. Okay. Come on, space. listen. If there was real, if there was real physics that indicated God, it would be on front page news. You would have Leonard Susskind all over uh, it, Hawking would be all over it, Lowen well, Krauss would be I all over it. Thing with theoretical physics, whilst it's theoretical, it's hypothesizing, it's speculation, it's how it could be. There's nothing to report. Right. Guys, guys, so there's I no have... evidence for God in this no, situation. No, hold, well, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Yeah, let Johan. Okay, space-time is an illusion of measurement. Now, people will sometimes say between measurement and observation, okay? Now, the problem with this is they tried to excise uh, consciousness from quantum mechanics artificially. Wigner says you can't do that. To make the formalism consistent, you need to add consciousness. Now, say that, that again, is please. Not, 
uh, to, to make the formalism of quantum mechanics consistent, you have to have the wave function eventually collapse on consciousness. Otherwise, you have you treat consciousness as this special thing to which quantum mechanics does not apply somehow. Wait, wait, rats. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Consciousness is separate from quantum mechanics, aren't you? Hang on, hang on. The, 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 just like to throw to, to pull back the quantum aspect of that with regard to collapsing probabilities, and that is observation. Observation is inherent within an emergent awareness. By consciousness, he means the observer causing the, the wave function to actually collapse. So that's what he means by that. Essentially, yeah. No. I, I, also, essentially, as when I die, my universe ceases to exist for me. By the same argument, from my perspective, all you guys stop existing as well. That's right. Correct. I actually have this in my Conscience Find the Soul video. Wouldn't that be because your own wave function is collapsing? Yeah, but the universe that condenses as a, as a result of that probability waveform condensing also disperses. Relative to you. Okay. Yeah. Relative to me, absolutely. Relative to me, yes. No, the That's the thing, though. There's no absolute you know, quantum fluctuation. So there's, the so there's no absolute uh, anything at the, wow. at the pack. So I fail, fail to see how, how, you know, if we don't know anything, then, then we're just we're perfectly fine in just saying that we don't know at the end of the day. We simply do, do not know. So absolutely. where does the faith come in in saying that we don't know? Because at the very end, the overall conclusion is that we do not know. But I do know. I do know that on that day that I met Jesus Christ, that I was born again. Well, that's not what I was talking about. about. That's not what I was talking about. What I was talking about is that by saying I don't know, how does that require faith? How does, are we talking about uh, yeah. physics or are we talking about atheism? Well, well at, at the very end, because we're saying, well, us as an atheist, we're saying that, that we don't know. And you using equations and mathematical formulas, words that I don't even begin to try to understand, that it because somehow no points to something that's, oh, you think this, but it may not be. So what? It may not be. I'm not saying well, that it is. Well, some of this isn't just, like, theory. This is, like, proven. There's been an experiment. I have a hypothesis, right? Can, can I just say, well, why is God always so mysterious that only a physicist with crazy mathematics could even remotely see the guy? Exactly. I mean, where where why, is this why, guy? Why is it's my job? That's, that's why I take it out myself. This question in, why is, by the same token, the universe have exactly the same property? Why is the universe the way we see it? How is the universe so complicated that it takes a, 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 a mad physicist thinking on really bizarre theoretical lines to actually come out with a theory that explains how it works? Well, that and is we are part of the universe. Let me throw we this in. We are part there. of it, let right? Me, we are a please. subunit of the universe, right? Please let yeah. me throw this in. And, there. And, I think rock, I can. Rock, go ahead. Rock. Rock. I think I can. I think I can at least explain this much of the equation. Jesus said that very thing. He said, I've told you about earthly things, and you've not understood. How could you possibly understand if I told you of heavenly things? Ooh, are you pinching my lines? When he tells about E equals MC squared. <laughs> The salvation is something that God does. Well, well come on. This is, this is the same Interest. guy that can turn water into wine, but he doesn't yes. give us enough alcohol yes. to make an antiseptic? He doesn't yes. tell us about that part? Yes. Yes. How could he? How would we understand it? All he has to do is if you, if you take the alcohol out of the wine and you rub it on a wound, you can stop an infection. Think of the thousands of people that wouldn't have died from a silly infection. There were people there that saw human body physical things that we call flesh being reformed right before their eyes and they still didn't believe okay, like okay. so <laughs> what, what exactly would it take for you to understand and see that's what he was saying i i've told you and showed you earthly things how can i possibly Prove to you anything heavenly. How well, I let's go, it let's, that would be very easy. If you can claim that God heals and he's all loving, show me an amputee that got his limb back. You no problem, people. I well, have a special answer for this one. Okay. I mean, does it always have to be a mysterious cancer that's deep within the body I mean, right. that we can't ever see? All right, so this is going to get a little interesting. Obviously, no one here... I think, so, Ra, you might be a creationist. I don't think other people, Aspiring and I are not, and obviously the atheists aren't. A absolutely, I'm a creationist. Okay, okay. But, 
exploring I well, well there, there is a there are truths in the story, even if you don't take the story literally. And this actually goes into okay, if, if Christianity is true, you don't believe it, uh, the four of you, um, the atheists. But I don't, Brian, what are you? Are you an atheist or? Uh, I haven't quite gotten. Uh, my my position my position remains my business for very good reason. It's okay. relevant to the actual truth. All right. Okay. So, if Christianity is true, just take that on board for a second. Then larger portions of the Abrahamic tradition will have to be true as well. Right. If we don't just stick to the Bible, do the, the fundamentalist thing. If we, if we expand our view, look at the broader Abrahamic tradition. Correct. All right. Say that again. Um, take that. Take that from the top. You're saying. If we if assume that the Abraham is true, the if, rest if, of it if is we true. Assume, if we assume Christianity is true, well, then, that mean Jerusalem is Ju Judaism is true. Yes. Uh, all right, so so just, who is right? Judaism. No, or hold, hold, hold on, hold on. Including. Okay. Well, well, I just want to preface that your argument it's, starts with an assumption. But go ahead. Right, right. But I'm gonna I'm gonna show you something cool here. Other things such as what it calls esoteric Judaism would also likely be true. Which is going to be a little uncomfortable for some fundamentalists to think about, but this is—it gets a little interesting. Um, you know, uh, Kabbalah—they call it, right? There is actually an explanation for the problem of evil within Kabbalah, which you don't have to take the Garden of Eden story literally for this to be true, but it ties the curse to the knowledge of good and evil. And it's uh, basically you can—you know what privation bunny is? It's—it's it's the belief that um, evil is the absence of good. Where the heck is this going? Where the heck is this going? Is that is that like where dry is the absence of wet? Yes. If you assume that, and you assume it's a little long to explain, but if you assume that, and you assume monistic idealism, you can derive Christian theology from first principles. And I'll give you a link wet, on this. Wait, wait, wait. Again, this is just another wacky circular side no, It's not. It's not. It's not. Sorry. This now, is, this there is, should this be is, a simple, universally obvious God that we could all easily see the same way, and it isn't. There is. There is. I'll show you. Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, guys, hang on, hang on, rats, rats. They can't see see a link on there, so when you post it, I'll post it in the chat so they can look at it themselves. But, okay. but Tom, Tom, I just want to let Tom finish what he's got to say because I felt like he was interrupted there. So Tom, right. finish up. Well, what what I guess what I was leading at is there's um, you know here's these, this physics story. There's all these wacky stories, variations of I saw God in a vision, or, or but other people around the planets all get different visions of this same supposed true God that tells them that they're right. This is it. I'm the one, and they're all different. Many are Two even words. conflicting to the point Personal of that. interpretation. I was gonna Correct. say I was gonna say if you go by the dichotomy of wet is a lack of dryness while dryness is a lack of wet it doesn't go anywhere yeah pretty much if we're going to go into say, subjective dichotomies i'd put it to you that our species has a speciality of finding the third option yes just like this there, just like sure. it's either wet or dry or it's neither. even if we have to even if we have to construct it logically um, technologically, we will find the third option. And more. Elephants, not elephants. Panda. There, third option. Hmm. There you go. Panda is right, the third so option. Just like, just like you don't be have it. to be atheists. Atheists. I mean, Explicitly you breaking the set. Atheists. There's four options. Right? Okay. Go ahead, Strife. No, I just did. Yeah, four options. You got you got good, evil, both, or neither. I was like, someone else wants to come on. Uh, yeah. uh, Sam, Sam, uh, I invited you on, so uh, if you got something to say, now would be a time to say it. Oh, um, I'll, I'll wait until that, there's something. That, that, that either, neither, both is consistent with the existence of matter on a subparticle level. This I'll be as demonstrated in the double slit experiment. You okay, mean, you mean, you mean, nowhere you in our with, natural uh, laws... Nowhere yeah, in our natural laws are there is there any supernatural required. It's all explained with physics and math, and no God is required. Period. And through these I, things, I we mean, also know know a few things that we sim that we simply do not know. That's also correct. All right, all right. How about this? How this? Rats. Let, let me ask you this. Yep. This whole this this whole time when you were doing the the you know going through the equations and all the experiments that were being done, saying that you know the materials don't exist and things aren't there when we're not seeing it. You know all that. Was that was that to assume that I thought that it, that I knew everything about the universe that I live in right now? 
uh, for each of you when I like. Yeah, it, was that to assume that I thought that this table no. is here when I'm not lo- looking? Help! For all I know, when I'm uh, out of the room, everything yes. in my room turns into Toy Story Four. I mean, it, it, it's it's a possibility. I'm not there to see it. Yeah, well, it, it's it's it is it's a little bit of a mind trip, right? Yeah, it's, it's a mind, like it's a mind trip, but, but at the very at the very core of it, it's basically not inhibiting it's not showing how my position is faith-based because what you're saying in there is that it's faith-based to not know something it's faith-based Wait, to uh, be inspiring unsure philo- okay okay in that sense well, inspiring philosophy said it was faith-based but i think um what he was trying to say there was that an assumption that is kind of this is obviously there are atheists who are not materials i know a couple of atheists who actually substance dualists which is very rare and some are it's one of them what oh, oh it's one of them very cool Mm-hmm. He's a sobcist, and he's an atheist. Yep, continue, okay, Raps. No, four. Okay, so, um, what was I saying? Okay, yes, most atheists, not all atheists, but most atheists assume materialism, and it actually, it's not the same as atheism, don't get me wrong, but it motivates a lot of atheism. Materialism example, motivates atheism? Yeah, they, they just assume, they just, you know, everyone does it, you assume naively the world's out there. Yeah. You, okay, so now, if you, okay, here's your thing, if you can explain everything, with science, you think that means there's no need for a god, right? Uh, I, 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 say, I, I say this. Wait, wait, wait. Isn't that naturalism? Isn't that a categorical error? Naturalism you're thinking of? Um, yeah, I'm actually a naturalist, but we'll get to that later. That's, that's yeah, I know, but I mean, but yeah. there's materialism, and there's physicalism, and there's materialism. Well, since Sam hasn't had a chance to jump in, uh, he's, he's wait, asking ahead, if he Sam. can jump in. So, Sam, uh, go ahead. Floor's yours. Well, I, I thought it was interesting when you um, mentioned, you know, that sort of materialism is the assumption that allows people to sort of, uh, uh, you're saying it undergirds their atheism. Um, I, at least from my personal experience, I tend to disagree. I mean, w- one of the key issues here is, you know, you're essentially trying to prove something that um, cannot be proven in the only in the only realm that we know. This is the difficult thing. I mean, Theoretically, if God is intervening the way you're saying, he should be dripping with physics. Um, and and that's I am in the works. room, though. Don't discredit an eyewitness. Well, well, well no, we're, just, wanna... we're, just, uh, we're just going towards rats at this point. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so here's the thing. If you... Okay, everyone thinks, you know, God's not in the physics. Okay, God should be dripping with physics. We don't see him in the physics, right? The reason for that, this has to do with the materialism, is that... There is one very minute assumption that we're making before we get the science started that changes the entire perspective of the physics. The physics stays the same, but our entire the way we see the physics changes instantly. Actually, there is a little bit of physics which you can get more directly, which you can kind of Excuse see. Excuse me, but like. you, that's the craziest way to do math is to start with an assumption. But go ahead. Okay, every, this this is an assumption that everyone makes before they do any science at all. This is the basic philosophy of science stuff, right? But what I'm saying is. If we get rid of that assumption, the whole thing shifts all of a sudden, and it suddenly becomes very theistic in nature. I well, disagree. I couldn't disagree more. Hang on, hang on, Strife. Hang on, hang on, Strife. Hang on, Strife. Tom, go ahead. I could not disagree more. You, science does not work by using assumptions. You start without an assumption. You make right. your hypothesis. You're taking a stab at it. It goes through the scientific method. You figure out how it works, and mm-hmm. then you put it out for everybody else to duplicate. Uh, it's that simple. I don't know how you're going okay, to start. Talks, it, when talks. you start with assumptions, you're going to end up going down the wrong river. I understand what you're saying. Well, is that I'm I'm getting this by getting rid of an assumption. So you're well, so you're uh, you're adding assumptions by getting rid of assumptions. No, no. So, so I should I should have I should have phrased that differently at the beginning because technically you get rid of an assumption that's still on a, it, It's a a foundational philosophy of science thing, which is I, I can I can reframe this as if you get rid of this one assumption. Suddenly, everything. Well, uh, it, 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 it all come. It's all coming down to this. You know, there is no assumption being made in, in my in my position. All I know, all I know, is that whether or not the ground exists behind me is completely. I don't care. The ground is there when I need to walk from here to the fridge to get myself a right. Mountain Dew, and the Mountain Dew is there when I need to drink it to quench my thirst. And this computer is here when I'm looking at it to talk to you guys. That's all I need to know. If it exists while I look at it, then that's all I know. But as far as what happens behind me, like I said, for all I know, it could be to- Toy Story 4 when I leave my room to go to work. Right. 
But you don't assume it's Toy Story 4 when you're not looking. I don't assume anything because I don't know what happens. Right, I mean, okay, my that, sister well, could be having sex in my bed when I'm not here. You know, I, I right, do not I know. know. Okay, that, that, that's you saying that, and that, that's, that's, you know, that's good for you. Well, but I'm, I'm saying that most people, when they assume things like materialism, they assume that there is an objectively real, real world out there. You ask anybody what happens at your house for sure when you're not there. They will all say, I don't know. For all I know, it could be this, 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 this. It could be any number of possibilities. But you, the, the whole, your whole premise starts on the fact that we are making some sort of assumption that turns out to not be the case. But we're Should not making something? an assumption to, to begin with. So the whole equation, even though I don't even have to research it, study it, know any of the terminology, it all doesn't work. It starts on a straw man. Okay, it may just be me, okay. but I'm getting a lot of dropouts. Okay, could I, could I, instead yeah. of making assumptions, do the, the last couple of steps and tie this to a god, actually? Well, well Wait, I'd like I to comment quickly sure, on Sam. science, because um, I, I actually work, I'm uh, a graduate student, so I'm broke, but um, still having, you know, I'm, right now, you know, I've done, I'd say in total now, about four years in, in uh, working in academia between various things, and w one of the biggest things that jumps out at me is the way that you, you know, science is inherently defined by methodology. And I think that you're ignoring that when you talk about, oh, it's this undergirding assumption. Well, no, science is all about posing tenable questions, posing uh, and framing matters in a way such that it makes sense um, uh, in terms of being able to measure. And the issue is, is you know, it's not that it preclu precludes um, the supernatural, it's just that the supernatural has never been something that could be testable. All right. Bingo. Let me Got answer it. that. Nice. Let me answer that. That's a good point. And here's where this thing is the problem, okay? You, every answer you get from science comes in terms, ultimately, in terms of a mental framework. Like every, Empiricism? Empiricism, you see empirical evidence. It, evidence is not material. It's qualia coming in through your senses, correct? Sure, but it's all, um, false, it's it's all sure. falsifiable, though. Every single bit of it right, is all falsifiable. Right, that's all falsifiable. That's correct. Correct. Now, the thing is, we don't, have any, we don't have evidence for any additional substance additional to that empirical information slash mental material. There's no super empiricism. It's not super empiricism. It, it's simply... What we observe is mental in nature. It's not material. And once you realize well, it's mental well, in yeah, nature... yeah, rats. Rats. We don't see the tree. We indirectly see the tree because we see the photons and they get processed in our brain. It's not like we're going to... We don't see... Everything we see is mental in a sense, if you want to be exact. Exactly. Right, which, which, actually cut, which actually brings us very nicely, and I hope you would ag agree with this as well, Sam. All scientific observation, yeah, including empirical analysis is based on the fundamental assumption that our observations are an accurate reflection of reality. It could be that our entire species suffers from an inherent delusion stemming from a fundamental function in our brain stem that affects the way that we perceive the world. Which would be kind of funny. But, if, yeah. but, if, what, we, yeah. but what we can do from those observations is hypothesize, figure out an idea as to why it may possibly work, figure out some way of experimenting to verify if our observation is correct. Then we can theorize and accumulate a body of data and across, as disciplines develop various disciplines correlating data, to establish what is essentially a consensus of the shared perception. And that's all we can really do with science. Yeah, I mean, that's the, that, I mean, that pretty much, I would say, hits, hits the nail on the head, Brian. Uh, I mean, well said. It's, I mean, it, it's inherent, I mean, the inherent thing of science is, is that can we model reality? Do we have a way of observing reality? I mean, fundamentally, if you want to say it's broken down to any assumption, because that's the limit of science. The limit is, is well, if, you know, all these physics, because physics could be useful, but, you know, you never, you can never actually say that, you know, if reality 
was constructed in such a way that it's just not we can't model it. We can't actually yeah, perceive and how, it. And, and how many times have we had to remodel our model of physics on several the back times. of a new discovery? Yeah, several, several times. times, right? Yeah, several times. Yeah. Newtonian yeah. physics, relativity, uh, quantum mechanics, all kinds of new things. Yeah, and, and I, I would still put it, I would put it to you. And I, yeah, exactly. And I'd put it to All you. Given that there are mathematically at least another eight physical perpendicular planes to explore. We're still touching the surface on, you know, eight elevenths of the universe of which we have comprehended nothing as yet. Agreed, and I would also like to add that if there is a God out there and it's actually acting on this universe and, and our physical laws, we should be able to detect those. The and second also, it crosses from whatever plane or from wherever woo-woo land it comes from, the second it enters this realm, we can, should be able to de detect it Tom. and measure Tom. it. Well, Tom. There's also, there's Tom. also Tom. another Let's element the here Tom. as well. Hang on, uh, one at a time, please. Can I get a word in? I've waited patiently a long time. Uh, I was about to oh, get the mic. Uh, hang on. Mm -hmm. I was about to give, give the mic to you, Raw. So relax. You can talk. Tom, Tom, what you just said is there's no evidence. I'm in the room. I'm telling you that God has revealed himself to me. Just because he hasn't done it for you yet doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. Well, can we repeat what, what can we repeat what happened? It was a hang on. It was a personal experience, Raw. Correct. Here, I was accused uh, uh, of it being a, merely an emotional event that occurred in my life some thirty-three years ago. Well, I I'm I just, am I'm, an eyewitness of what happened, and I'm here to well, tell you politely, you're incorrect in assuming that that it was just an emotional event. Raw. Uh, Bro, can I say something? Science works by an impersonal experience. It means it can work between any person. You can test it. You know, it's not just I see a dinosaur walking down the street. The guy next to me doesn't see it. We have somebody's wrong here, right? I think he's saying it in non-science, like in a personal one-to-one. -one yeah, science, a like personal, a, a personal thing. But personal experiences don't. He's not don't, a scientist. Yeah, it, do, it doesn't prove anything. It doesn't yeah, he, really he, count not, as evidence. I could say. Yeah. I had the I had a personal experience with the flying spaghetti monster, and I would be just as convincing as you, Raw. So that's Here's why the, it's really hard for other people to simply take your word for it and go on just that. I'm not yeah, asking which, anyone which is, which to take why my the word point, for it. Which is why the point of um, our entire species being prone to a fundamental experiential delusion is pertinent. Um, I would agree with, with what Brian just said. I, I was going to say, Raw, the, the thing that struck me about when you described that is, it, it, you know, I'm not trying to glorify this behavior, um, you know, in, endorse it or whatever, but it sounded like when I took hallucinogenic drugs, those things certainly weren't real. It was, you know, some of the things that I saw and I was able to realize about the universe. I mean, nevertheless, the experience was real. Um, humans are prone to delusion, um, and that is just a consequence of the way in which our brains are structured. So you go, right, you go right ahead, Sam, and dismiss me as delusion. No, I'm no, not, no, 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 that's not what he's saying. That's not what he's saying. He would be biblically correct by doing so. Yeah, but that that's is not, not what, I what said. he's saying. Um... That's not what he's saying. Sounds One of the reasons like why I have a problem with the if not a theist, then an atheist argument is because we have hundreds of mentally impaired human beings that cannot even comprehend lunch, let alone the concept of deity. How are you going to put them in either category? The only category that I'm going to put any of my statement in, okay, is this. Either you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior, or you don't. End of story. End of story. What I was going to say about uh, Raw there was, um, obviously, when we want proof, we look for science or maybe sometimes philosophy. But there are probably some things where people just take it on, you know, you hear something from a friend and you just take it immediately, quote-unquote, on faith, simply because you, you trust your friend, right? Well, I think that you're redefining faith here. 
Um, uh, actually, no, I don't, I don't, mean, I, I, I don't, I don't mean in the blind faith sense. I don't he think he is. Let me try well, an well, uh, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example, okay? When you prank a friend, yeah? Your mm -hmm. friend gets pranked on the basis that their faith in you not to prank them is such that they let their guard down and walk into a situation that otherwise they would be guarded against. So we're defining faith as like a reasonable degree of trust? Well, if you're going to look uh, at the definition of faith, I mean, we could go... Basically, basically, basically is faith, faith is how much conviction you have in your understanding of the world around you based on your experiences within that world. Well, to, to me, I mean, faith is... And what they're using is trust based on past experience. It's it, it's it's like this. It, the reason. Well, faith has many many di many different meanings depending on who you're talking to. I per I prefer to never use the word faith. I would say I have confidence. I have confidence in my friend because maybe just maybe I've actually hung out with him before. I know what he's about. I know what he would do. What he wouldn't do to the to, uh, for the longest time I've known him. I know that if I if I go to Sebring International Raceway with this guy as a friend, we go rush the race. That's not going to stab me while I'm driving. I, and yeah. You know, that's because yeah, but, for the amount of time he's actually been driving with me, or I've ridden with him, he's never pulled out a knife and tried to stab me. I, yeah. So it comes down to a semantics debate, and another good word for that is belief. I believe that the sun will come up tomorrow. Unfortunately, yeah. If un unless I actually have the data to indicate that, um, you know, at midnight tonight, there is going to be a major, you know, uh, asteroidal impact right on my city. Um, you know, I have no way of whether or not that that belief, however validated by past experience, is going to be consistent until tomorrow morning happens and get. Guess what? There wasn't an asteroidal impact. And that's what comes from David Hume uh, back during the Age of Enlightenment, and he was an atheist philosopher speaking on the problem of induction. Well, I was and actually I think speaking from understand. my own understanding um, <laughs> rather than quoting anybody else as an authority. Let me, let me try and discuss what Ra was... Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say, it's kind of ironic because David Hume used the example of the sun, but yeah, go ahead, uh, uh, Johanna. Okay, so let me try a little social experiment here, and we're going to compare belief in God to belief in something that, I mean, many atheists think that you know, belief in God is crazy. Let's compare this to belief in something else that people consider to be crazy. Okay. UFOs and alien abductions, okay? A little social experiment. Some random person says that they were abducted by aliens, and they have marks on their body, and they claim that they have marks on their body, and they have a, a chip or something of some unknown alloy in their blood, and there is burn marks in the back of their lawn where some craft landed and multiple witnesses saw some weird object in the sky, right? If you hear that, you're not going to believe that, are you? I'm going right? to, I'm, I'm not going gonna, to tell them that they're lying, but I'm not going to, you, you know, take their you're word You're going to doubt it. it. Okay. Well, who is the now, source? I mean, did we get this from Fox News? I mean, I'm just curious. <laughs> just any random story. Okay, just, you just hear about it. it. It's supposedly documented, quote-unquote. There, there are some, you might see it on the Ancient Aliens show or some of these weird things and... You just the just need, make need evidence difference. of the alien saucer. Right. Don't okay. Okay. No, that, that's like, I mean, I mean, give me a body, damn it. Get, what, like, what I'm saying, it. what I'm saying is that not everyone, that people don't just believe things based on science. This is the point of the social experiment. Okay. Now we're going to change this, the the game a little bit. It's not just a random thing that happened to some person across the country or in some other country. You come home one day and your wife says, "I've been abducted by aliens. There's marks on my body. There's an implant in my." under my skin, you look outside and, oh my goodness, there is burn marks all over your lawn. It, you know, it, it's some bizarre radiation. It hasn't destroyed the grass, but it's bent the grass somehow. And then you hear all your neighbors saying there was something like some weird thing with red glowing lights floating over your house. This, you know, all your neighbors say this. Yeah. You're likely to believe them, even though there's no scientific proof in a direct sense. It's happened to you all of a sudden. It didn't happen to some person in, over in England or over in... But rats. Yep. Aliens, science can say what the probability of aliens is, but we don't know if aliens exist because we can't test for aliens on Earth right, exactly right, unless right. we actually interact with them. I well, like, I don't... My, what my point is is that you, even though you can't test this and prove scientifically that, yes, your wife was abducted by aliens... Well, you could. You, you, what? You could. Well, I, 
but in principle, but, to, but the point is, is that this, you're not likely to doubt your wife considering. What a, no, we wouldn't. We I, wouldn't I, doubt, doubt the doubt the wife of our extra, injuries, oh, wait, or wait, doubt, right doubt the friends that you know that something may have happened. But who knows? It may not have been an alien space It Could have been a chopper and some guy right. that was absolutely sick. You know, and there's lights on choppers and what if it, choppers what and, and choppers and planes have been misidentified as UFOs before. We have nothing whatsoever of an actual alien spacecraft. We have only misidentities, was... misidentifying well, cases. Or well, stuff that remains in UFOs, to this day. Is that? Is she I, I would like to make a quick point. I'd like to make a quick point. All of Go this ahead. is hinging on the fact that you're assuming that that um, the lot of us um, who, are, who are doubting your position... Um, are only basing knowledge based upon science. I don't think that that's the case um, at all. Um, that being said, I would say that for a claim that's as serious as UFO abductions or, or you know, some sort of um, interaction with the universe that God has, science. I would say that science is the best um, is the best methodology to test yes. that claim if it's right. Tested. I would agree with you. If the evidence, I also agree. If no the evidence trust... is there, then science will ultimately, eventually, be our best means of evaluating that right. evidence. Absolutely. So what the idea is, though, is say you know we live in an old universe. Some what the alien civilization is a million years more advanced than us. We may not get to that science. In that, you know, now yeah, there is a scientific explanation. Well, for wait, it. rats. So yeah, no, they no, we've gone. Technology, so, and 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 stripe, hang on, stripe. Time, go ahead. We've gone, gone so far away from where is God now? I mean, where the heck are we now? God is. We're arguing. I was arguing for Ra's position. I was arguing for Ra's position that it may not be entirely. Uh, if you hear about a spiritual experience from some random yeah. person on the other side of the country, then yes, you might not. Hang on, guys. Hang on. Uh, Musk, be sure to, to mute uh, the sound on Blog TV because I think we might be getting some feedback from you. Yeah, the only comment I'd like to I'd like to make on that is the further away you get from the first-hand experience, the more difficult it becomes to prove it. Correct. That is incredibly true. I mean, well, you know, I'm not going to sit here and be pedantic and pretend that I don't trust. You know, if my friend said that. He met uh, an extremely attractive girl, and he thinks she likes him. I'm not going to tell him that I think he's full of crap. I mean, let's be reasonable here. But yeah, the, at the most you're going to say not... is pics or it never happened, and then you'd be jesting with him. Ex exactly. But it's, it's one of those things where there's a difference, though. I'm not... That claim is not of the same quality. The evidence for it and the demands that I personally have for that claim... Uh, is not the same as, you know, if someone was saying that they had suddenly just synthesized a diamond in their dorm room. You know, there can, it's, you know, different claims bear different forms of evidence, and science is the best methodology for providing the most superior form of evidence, but it's not the only evidence I'm going to yeah, accept. Yeah, and, and, yeah. If I, and if I can say, say something, you know, we, you talk about claims, you know, some claims are more believable than others. It's also another thing because those claims may have happened before. For example, if you walk, walk in on your room and you say, wow, there's a stain. What happened? Oh, I spilled my coffee. That's, that's you know, that's understandable. Gravity works. I mean, yeah, it's kind of holding everything yeah, down. Until, right something hap until something happens in one of the 11 dimensions or one of the 11 dimensions that we're not privy to, and all of a sudden gravity stops working, or rather, works differently. So, so, then, so then you have another claim where it's like, okay, well, there's a stain on the, on the carpet. What happened? Oh, I took a flamethrower to it. And I'm like, one, where did you get a flamethrower, and what were you doing with a flamethrower in the house? You know, that... Right. that, that, uh, that again, that... you see, we could be talking terminology. What your friend refers to as a flamethrower you might recognize as a coffee squirter. <laughs> you know, maybe there's a sticker that So, interpretation, terminology, we could all be talking about the same fucking thing. I, I call that false advertising, but what, okay. What I was getting at with Ra's argument from experience, though, I guess, is, I think it was Tom who said, it might have been Tom who said this, that, or maybe it was Redline, that, you know, the farther away you get from, the more um, Word of mouth, the claim becomes the more unbelievable it becomes, right? Yeah, that was that was me. The further away Fine, you get yes. from the direct experience, the more difficult it is to prove. 
Yeah, so what I'm saying is, if you hear some random person on the other side of the country saying, Jesus healed them, you're not as likely to believe it. But if, say, what Ron's suggesting is, not this is proof, mind you, but that it may, people may take this as evidence, even though it's not the best evidence. Well, let me put it to you this way. If there was enough uh, healing going on by God, and it wasn't just a one-off incident, some guy out in the middle of nowhere making the claim, if there was enough of it going on, there'd be a statistical evidence for it, and we could, science could look at it, and we, we could unequivocally say that God did it. So to, there's where my problem is there. I see. Yeah, I, well, well, well so I wouldn't disagree with you in the slightest when it comes to that. Um, what, I, what I would say is that just as we each perceive the world differently, depending on how our brains are wired and, you know, the terminology and other shit that we have going on. It's the same with how we perceive what is sufficient evidence to believe a certain claim. Just as That's the- you would just as you would accept an assertion given by your nearest and dearest on face value. Yeah? Well, um, well this is the beauty of the scientific method, because it ferrets that out. Yeah, that's why yeah, we have peer, that's absolutely. why we have peer review and the rest of that. So that's yeah, where that absolutely. absolutely. But as, as I was saying earlier, and Sam agreed with me, and I'm not calling on Sam as an appeal to authority. I'm just or popularity or anything. Just pointing out that we've been there. Um, and I, my brain just farted. Um, but that's what, that's why we don't trust one brain. Yeah, no exactly. one, no one brain works. Exactly, but well, what, what, but, but what peer review and experiment, rinse, wash, repeat does is it helps us to quantify that which is verifiable within the shared perspective. perspective. I agree. Well, it's, I would further that. Um, if I don't know how, you know, I, for information, I work in biology, but I don't know how many of you have ever taken any sort of evolution or or an anatomy course um, or just introductory biology at an undergraduate level but um, one of the key things is is if you look at the brain and I know that some of the people in here are not going to be happy with this but you know bear with me here the the part of the brain that processes um, you know the most reasonable stuff your experience your consciousness that the newest the prefrontal cortex that mm-hmm. is the worst wired area of the brain because it's had the least amount of time to evolve. Yeah, um, if you look at the, the efficiency of the connections in terms of the brain stem um, for the vital functions, if you look at even the amygdala in terms of those basal emotions, the rage, um, you know, those types of things, the, the human brain is just so inefficiently wired yeah, um, in terms of its consciousness. There's an interesting procedure that they do um, for certain forms of epilepsy, and that is to actually sever the communications between the left and the right hemispheres. When you do that, a very interesting thing happens. And you get somebody with the ability to vocalize things that they see and register on the right side or the left, I can't remember which, but to actually write things that they perceive from the other side and there is there is a that there is a disconnect and things that are perceived one side of the brain are totally and utterly you know they, they're non-existent so the brain is not perfect. the other side sorry so the brain is not perfect absolutely it's not no all right so with the brain being imperfect you know how can we trust our own personal experience in that case Exactly. You can't. That's, that's the and that, point. And that is why the fun, fun, one correct of the you. Fun Let me correct you. You can't. Science is I that can't. what we see, oh. what we observe, is an accurate reflection. Yeah, the, you know, the, the, refle- the experience might be all well and good, but to actually, you know, say that that experience is actually legitimate, you know, would be kind of going a little bit overboard. Yeah, but to the individual, first-hand experience is legitimate. That's the whole point. Yeah, first-hand experience may be legitimate to them, but it doesn't make it legitimate across the board. That's what we're saying. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. 
And so to this, and this and this is where I think I think a lot of these conversations break down, and that is we are trying to find something that is, is quotes true for the individual, and trying to map it across the entire species as okay, this I know with certainty is true for my reality, so it must be true for everybody else. Why can't you see it? Oh, yeah, go ahead, uh, IP. Okay, yeah, I just kind of want to build on that. Um, and then I got to check out, too. I'm sorry, I, I didn't realize this was going that long. But um, basically, um, when we're looking at existential experiences, personal experiences, I know, understand, we can't make objective claims about reality. What we are trying to do, though, I guess, as a whole, is to get to a, a place of truth from the standpoint of where something we can all agree upon. And that's all that this is really going into. It's not that we are making objective exact claims. It's kind of like the conversation that uh, Cartesian Theist and I had last time on here, is that we're making inferences to the most rational conclusion based on the evidence we can present. Um, right. To say a little bit about the I don't know position, um, I have been thinking about that for a while, and I have uh, been planning on doing a video upcoming later about it. But basically, sure, a rational person, I guess, could take the I don't know position, but I also think they need to accept the ramifications of that. If you take the position I don't know, about the, uh, the conclusions people are drawing from evidence and whatnot from that, then that's fine and all, but then I guess you also have to take the conclusion that you don't know about the evidence they're drawing. If you're going to say, I don't know, you have to be say, I don't know about your own position. So in other words, you cannot just be skeptical of the conclusions other people have drawn. You have to be skeptical of your own position that you draw that you don't know. I have no problem with that. I would say that it takes a degree, that it is... It shows a very large degree of intellectual sophistication to submit your own ideas to the level of skepticism that you submit other people's ideas. I agree Absolutely. with that, and I applaud it. Yeah, exactly. We would actually, I would actually agree, agree with that. You know, you, you know, I myself could be wrong about absolutely everything I know. You know, it's, well, yeah, and I don't deny that possibility. Yeah, and that's what I'm getting at. But if you, if if we're not really trying to get to the exact, you know, unrefutable proof, I think the only thing you really can't prove, uh, disprove is that you're having. Experience. What we're trying to do is we're trying to look at the evidence emerging out of science, the evidence coming out of philosophy, out of metaphysics, and trying to reach a rational conclusion from that. We could all sit around and argue different epistemic possibilities. It could be this. We don't know if it's that. We could be that. We don't know if it's that. What we're more interested in, what is the most rational conclusion we can draw from the evidence we can find? It could be this. It could be that. But what is the best possibility for all of this? But what yeah, blows my I, mind I, is God is not at all... We have to use metaphysics to explain this guy? I mean, it should be completely obvious. It should be... We shouldn't need a huge conversation of a Skype after Skype after Skype and hours of, of, of conversation. I mean, this should be so clear and obvious to everyone around the world universally. And it isn't. To some it just people isn't. it is, though. Yeah. How do you explain it, Islam it and Buddhism and all the rest of the religions around the world? There's just too many different religions. Okay, they all come I, to different I, I would, conflicting I would, conclusions. I would, like, I would like to pause it because I have to go because um, I've got another hangout that I need to go to. Sure, but I'd like in later. To, I, I'd like to uh, just close on this um, with regards to I don't know being a position um, and what you were just saying about, okay, what about Islam? What about Buddhism? What about Hinduism? Okay, now each of those, all right, to the perception, to the perspective of the individual, they know what they believe that they know from their perspective, culturally, um, traditionally, empirically, um, intellectually, emotionally, whatever, okay? And as a species, we have, a, we have this... Uh, tendency to categorize as a definitive position, yeah, encompassing an entire body of worldview based on a few things that they've said on a particular subject. The human brain is not that simplex. A worldview is an amalgam of all of those influences and more that I proceeded with. Okay, and to try and objectify the world in such a way as it is described by every individual using the same terminology, the same understanding, the same interpretation, the same lexicon is, I put it, um, self-defeating because it's through the diversity of thought, 
through the diversity of biology, through the very differences that we have, yeah, that our drive to prosperity arises, our empathy, our everything altruistic about us emerges from those drives. But That's to sim simplify it into, okay, you think this, therefore you're an I don't knowist, you're a theist, you're an atheist, therefore bullshit, bullshit, bullshit is completely and utterly self-defeating. We need to be having different conversations. All right. It all Thank boils down to today. method. Oh, God. Uh, no, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to jump. Sorry, I didn't mean to jump in there. Sorry. It's all right. No, no problem. Uh, Musk, you were saying something? It's not. All oh, right. just actually, brain fart, man. Go ahead. Oh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Anyway, uh, no, I, I was wondering, were you saying something, Musk? You know, I got brain fart. It just left me. <laughs> I was saying something, but it left. Uh, Brian, hey, how can you? Talk back all there, right? Eh? <laughs> Well, let's see if I can invite one more person on because this was a guy that I originally wanted to have on first, and so I just I'll kind of break the ice right right here. Uh, uh, Bruce, what's up? Hey, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Where the hell have you been? I have been sleeping. Yes. Well, well, actually, I can't blame you there. I would I would actually be sleeping too. All yeah. right. Yeah. I kind of wanted to ha have you on first to kind of break break the ice and everything like like that. You know, just go over a little bit of everything. But, you know, you're kind of in the middle of the conversation, so kind of bear with. And so, and so I just want, want to go on one, one thing there. In terms of personal experience, yes, the personal experience might be completely real to the person. But we can't say that, that that is, you know, real to everyone or it's real in general. We can say that, that we can say that, and it might even be wrong. Who knows? I think we just lost IP. Everyone else fine? Yeah. yeah. I'm fine. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, just lost IP. Let me see if I can. Yeah, he's oh, there. There he goes. Let, let me ask you this, uh, Red. Sure. Isn't everything based on what you know personally? Or how do you figure? Like, where you well, going? I mean, your experiences in life. I mean, you wake up in the morning, you have your coffee, you go to work or school. Uh, your perception of life is on a personal level. Yeah, sure. It could be. It could be me. I could actually be the only person in life, and you're all just a figment of my imagination. You know, that could be a possibility. What What if the God we're trying to discuss here and trying to understand has designed it in just that way? That the only way you will ever enter in is on a personal level. Hey, that's a really crappy design. I would agree with that. <laughs> that's got to be yeah, the only way to get it done. That's why I try to pry the lid off for you guys, just in case that's true. So. Yeah. The, well, the, the, thing well, the is problem, that, the problem with that statement that 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 it's a crappy way of doing it would be like saying I don't agree with my boss, therefore I quit. Well, well the thing is, is that it's not disagreeing with the boss. It's just that we're trying to find out if this boss actually exists. Is there is there a guy out there that's actually barking the orders? Or is it, but, or is it but, a, in this case, a book pretending to be the boss, pretending to be the actual authority on life, on existence, on ev you know everything you could possibly imagine? We're trying to verify and validate that we ought to take orders from this guy. How, how do you okay. think that it's but, a book pretending to be? The I boss don't. Of... I don't. We're tr that's why we're trying to verify it. I don't know if, if it is or if it isn't. <laughs> I just, I just said that think, if it's... Otherwise, think about what that book went through to make it to this day and age. Yeah, it went through a lot of people. I'm not, I'm not saying that, but... No, it went through a lot of wars and people fighting. Uh, they so did the Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. So did a lot of things. It's completely irrelevant. People mm. have fought over really <laughs> crazy crap. I mean, people have given up their lives for really crazy crap. You know, we're not going to go on on appeal to, to a popularity thing here. We want to verify this information, and verifying the information is is all we want to do. We're not saying that okay. you know okay. the God God does exist or God does okay. not exist. Okay, let, let me say this: the Bible does say this, and he it's it's a rule book. Okay, uh, G, Jesus said this, and if you're going to, uh, we're talking about Jesus Christ. He's the one that's made these claims in this so-called book. Okay. The one that I claim to have met. 
All right. That I know these are extraordinary claims that he's made and that I've made tonight. But what if, okay, just ask yourself, what if we're looking for, for proof when he says, I am the proof? You either accept me or you don't. That's the entrance. This is the doorknob. You either turn it this way and you get or you can argue all day long and say the doorknob doesn't exist and I'm not going to turn it either way. Well, what if he set it up in just that way and, and that's why you can't see it? And he's literally blinding all of you from seeing it with the exception of, of Bruce in the room because I know he's a believer. I do too. I don't know about I don't know about the other people. I I guess Jonathan is. I'm not oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John, okay. Jonathan is, is but a... but if if he's if he's made a statement that says it's impossible, okay. This is the statement the Bible makes. It is impossible to please God without faith. And then it says faith is a gift that we receive. Okay, it's free. It's a free gift. And if Possibly, I'm just asking everyone to ask themselves. Could I get the receipt on that gift? I'm just asking everyone, <laughs> sure, to ask themselves tonight, am I rejecting the free gift of God? This is a nice story, but you're lacking in proof. Let me make a suggestion here. Yeah, that's, 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 that's just a simple, nice, namby-pamby way of saying, love me on my woo-woo story or you're going to go to hell. Let me, let me make a suggestion. I agree with you. It is, it is namby-pamby right now. But he's coming back in judgment. It won't be. Yeah, well, he was supposed to be here a thousand years ago. Where is this guy? Well, That's let me, let what you just a... said is quoting scripture, my friend. What was that, Ralph? Well, what was that, Ralph? You know that it, it's, hey, uh, it's really tough on, to prove hey, anything on, Bruce, uh, Bruce, prior to Bruce, uh, King Bruce, David's dynasty. Bruce, let, let, let Rats go. It, it was Rats' turn. Go ahead, dude. What I was suggesting is let's say that Ra is right and this soul is very well hidden, okay? If that's the true, I mean, obviously you guys. You probably have run into a hundred thousand the you know many theists, and you, you take their arguments and you're like, "This is stupid. I don't believe this." If it's the case that it's not easy to find, wouldn't it make sense to, so quote unquote, go off the road to find? I mean, like actually dig into like weird topics. The reason I say this is I have some friends who were formerly atheists. Um, one of them actually was on my channel. He was actually skeptical of some of my videos. He eventually he went into physics himself. We had some discussions. Okay. And he became a theist at first, eventually. He took the, he took the, the arguments and the physics seriously. Now he, I don't know if he called, would define himself as a Christian, but he thinks that Jesus is the incarnation, what you think of as the source, okay? He actually he has what you think of as Christian beliefs. Don't ask me how I got him from point A to point B, or point C, because I don't want to talk about that in public. <laughs> but um, he's, very, he's still very scientifically minded, and... He was, he was, you know, just like you guys, skeptical YouTube atheist, and this actually, this took about a year for this to happen, but it worked. And so my suggestion is, why not, instead of looking at, like, say, fundamentalist arguments and so forth, kind of go off the road a bit and get into kind of, you know, just examine weird stuff out there and see if there's something to it. Well, well the reason is real I simple, would... because, because if you're talking about the creator of the universe that, that acts on Earth, it should be, I shouldn't have to go off-road to find this guy. It should be right in front of everybody right, the same way. Well, allow is, me to extend well, that's an assumption. this challenge. Um, are you, how familiar really are, are you with but, the culture of Brazil and Santeria and all that? And Somewhat. Well, in Brazil, you can go to a man called an ayahuasquero, and what he will do is he will give you a very powerful hallucinogen known as ayahuasca, right. and that right. will allow you to become Ram one with the universe. I encourage you to do that, then, by the same token. If you're going to go down any weird route to get truth, I would suggest that you smoke peyote with Native Americans. I would suggest Actually. that you indulge in DMT. and, and Actually, Actually um, speaking about going down the rabbit hole, some of those topics or the topics I discussed with my friend. This All is right. this is not something you can get from a traditional fundamental. If you just want to stick to the Bible and you stick to like the traditional funny arguments, you're not going to get there. What I'm saying, go out, to, for, forget trying to be thinking about Christianity for a second, just go out and dig into that kind of stuff. Because in fact, as a matter of fact, some not that particularly, but th topics related to that were stuff we discussed. All right. Well, and, I have not, no not the problem with There was some other weird stuff that it, it was right. very, he found it very convincing at the end of the day. And... All right. It's a nice story again. Yeah, but it, it's it, a nice it story, but nothing, here, no bearing. Here's All right, I kind of, I kind of want to get get Bruce in because you know he just got here. So, so Bruce, uh, say what you gotta say. Sorry, I interrupted you. Uh, well, 
you know, you're not going to find any kind of archaeological evidence, first off, uh, beyond uh, prior to King David's dynasty. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's pretty much it. The only thing that you're going to find is, is some sort of written documentation handed down by, you know, generation, generation, generation uh, to that date. That's, that, that's basically it. I don't think anything has been found prior to King David's dynasty. So we do know that, you know, at least back to King David, you know, that this person existed, his dynasty existed. Uh, what you could say about him could possibly be true. Um, but I have a question for you, the atheists. You know, if... Um, it, do you, do you think that everything in the universe just uh, existed forever? That was all matter and energy is eternal. I don't or, know. I really you, do not know. Yeah, I know. Well, the issue. Or do you think a, do you think the universe itself uh, just came into being by chance? Because what well, your go ahead. Let me let me pose this this way because modern cosmology <laughs> is incredibly confusing, and I'm not a physicist. I would never claim to be a physicist. Uh, I can only claim to be a biologist. Um, but the key thing is, is that the sum of the antimatter and the matter in the universe is zero. Technically, we do live in a universe that is nothing, but it's the way that that equation is, is, um, sort of balanced. That is the key. So we could start from a different zero. So you would, as long as you're adding to each side, approximate energy in the universe, right? What? You would say, what, you would say what, what was that? You're admitting to entropy, uh, the effects of entropy, which is the equilibrium of the energy in the universe. That is that, not at all what I said. Well, you just said. I, I, I said that the universe is technically nothing. In sum, when you take the sum of everything that is contained. It, you mean in sum, take, how, how could it be nothing unless you're saying that it's balanced? Nothing can, can can balance nothing. Exactly. It's, it's not nothing. It's nothing in one sense, but not another. This is this is physics, and it's, it's a little bit. Hey, what they're saying is, the physicists, like say Krauss, there's a zero point field, okay, and that zero point field, you can have particles and anti particles popping in and out of existence and annihilating with each other. The catch is, is you still need a zero point field, and you still need space time for that zero point field to exist in. So it's not. It's nothing in one sense. If you want to, if you want to count material things as the only things that exist. Then yes, you're you're adding matter and any matter up. They go to zero, but there yeah, is an, something there. It's that's zero point field. Context for a while. It's not. It's not that there's no particles popping out of nothing. They're popping out of a flux of energy. Listen, I got to check out. I'm sorry, I'm running out right now. But I, I this conversation went. <laughs> I was not expecting it to go, but um, I appreciate it. But I'll, I'll take care, everybody. See ya. See ya. There is something. Well, I, would, I would see you, IP. Good I, meeting I would, you. I would like to just point out before we get here is that none of us have a PhD. I don't know uh, if oh, I can't no, speak I'm for everyone, but no, none of us have a PhD in physics. And I mean, well, um, if to, you're an atheist discuss, and you don't believe in a god, what you're saying is that uh, the universe came to be by chance. No, what, what we're no. saying is that we do not. What know. other way is there? We don't. Know. I'm there saying might, that, there might be millions of different ways that a universe could pop into existence, but it's, me... it's, we just do not know. Millions what evidence would it's you have enough. to say that a Red god line. did it? Some Red line. Hold on. I have something interesting to say here. Okay. Um, you can actually set up a trichotomy between the Big Bang, naturalism, and physicalism. You can only pick two. And the reason I say that is if you you can take the this is I don't know if you know the guy Dorpaton on YouTube. He's not real bright, and he um, always tries to argue the universe is eternal. It's even though Volenkin says you know they've proven now it it did have a beginning. No, that. I think you're misstating the board Guth Belenkin theorem, and I've seen William Lane Craig do this. And right, if you I actually saw. look at what Belenkin himself himself says, um, and I've actually met Belenkin because my university is in a similar area, and the key thing behind the theorem is that it's only with respect to this singularity. And also, I'd like to point out that a singularity, the Big Bang, is not it's a, key, it's not a creation event. It's a description of the expansion. The creation event is known yes. as a quantum nucleation. So if we're going to start with it at the beginning and not have this argument fail on its beginning, let's start with the quantum nucleation. This is not the quantum, by the way, 
that was going with. I was aiming at something else. So yeah, something I know, subtle that I think they missed. There, but, but Craig still uses it. And, I know, and okay. It's, and it's still... This is what Vilenkin says on uh, Many Worlds in One on page 176. It is said that an argument is what convinces reasonable men, and a proof is what it takes to convince even an unreasonable man. With the proof now in place, cosmologists can no longer hide behind the possibility of a past eternal universe. There is no escape. They have to face the problem of a cosmic beginning. Yeah. That, that's Vilenkin in his own words. So now, that doesn't mean that God exists, right? There could be something else that but, causes the universe. But I'm going to set up an if we're going to I, acknowledge what the theorem actually says, it says that it's with respect to the current sing state of the expansion of the universe and that singularity. There could have word, been prior singularities. The word is cosmos, the cosmos. Okay, so maybe there the is... singularity, the cosmos. And this is a common mistake that people make with quoting Vilenkin and quoting his theorem. That there could be another... And so, and so what happens is that it really it doesn't, doesn't help the case at all. Okay. It's not this breakthrough theorem. That's the first <laughs> thing. Is that this, this didn't really change much of the view because it doesn't actually say... It's just a mathematical expansion. It okay. doesn't really say anything descriptive about the universe because it leaves out the things that are the unknowns. Would you and the say, unknowns are is what is before the singularity because we can't see. Would you say at the very that least far. the null hypothesis? So say we take that VVG off the, off the table, that it's reasonable, maybe not 100% proven, but reasonable to say that the that space time came into emergence at the Big Bang. As far as we know it, as far yeah, as back uh, as far maybe, back, maybe there's some other. I would, I'd say it's an unknown. I would say this, you know. <laughs> If we look back in time far, far enough, if we look into space far enough, we eventually hit a boundary. We cannot go past that boundary. So as long as what you're say, saying is inside the boundary, that is the beginning as far as we can see it. That is the beginning of the universe that we can actually study. If this is our space-time. Mm -hmm, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's impossible. The, the, the oh. issue here is that we don't know how space-time is established. We don't know enough about space-time. Well, so I'm going guys, to say I don't know. Hang on. Raven, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. What's the, what's the circular argument here? Um, okay. As I just said, it sounds like it. But the thing is, uh, if you're going to say that if you, if you don't believe in a god, then... What other cause is there? I mean, unless you, you're saying that the this universe is an argument is born by chance. Yeah, this, yeah, what, I agree you. totally. No, no what what now, you're saying, what you're saying is that by having no opinion whatsoever, it is you're just going to prescribe an opinion on us. We're not doing that. We're not. Uh, no, we're well, not, what other option is there? We do Tell not me. know. You don't know, so you're playing life, uh, life's game. And arguing from ignorance, really? No, what we're doing is we're saying if you that don't we don't know. Why are you in a debate? We, position, we don't have to. We, we don't have, have to answer the question. Have. We don't have to answer the question. We just have to tell you why your argument does not actually prove the point. So My I argument say, does prove the point because I, if everything happened by chance, you and you don't believe in a god, you have faith in a chance that is one in one and uh, followed by one hundred thirteen zeros, which is one to the okay, negative I can throw, power of fifty. I can so, throw numbers Lord, out there too. Let me let me just let me just throw something out. One out to here. the negative and, power and of fifty is one. Guys, 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 guys. Let me let me throw something out there, right? Let me throw something out there. All right. Um Ravenwolf. Let's say that you were in California and you had a friend that lived in New York. And you were talking to him and you said, Hey, why don't you come over to California and we'll hang out? And so your friend says, okay, as soon as you hang up the phone, it only took him 30 seconds to make the trip from New York to California. And you ask the simple question, how did you get here so fast? And his answer was, he walked. You know for a fact that that is total BS. That is you, still, you still don't know, hang on, you still don't know how he made the trip so fast. But you do know one thing for sure, it sure as hell wasn't walking speed. That's what we're saying. So we That can, is we the can, total misrepresentation of the, uh, of the No, that uh, is our age. position. That is our position. I'm not Your saying Your position what, thinks that just because uh, what what people say that God created the universe 
that you're conveying that it is similar to the same argument as saying that somebody got somewhere really fast and said they walked, and just because you don't believe them, that you're no. conveying totally straw manning. No, that's not what he's yes, saying. Yes, what straw manning is. You're misrepresenting one that's point. That's not of what he's saying. No, no, what he's saying is you can't just say, since we don't know, God did it. It's very simple. I'm, you just can't say that. I am all, I am actually working out the impossibilities. Okay. And there's, only, there's only two options. Everything came into existence by itself anyway, without the help of God, even though science has actually proven that impossible. Then why are... The first law of thermodynamics, and it violates law of oh, No, no. no okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. First, but first, first the, of all, thermodynamics states that you can never have an increase of, or decrease of energy or matter, which means that matter and energy cannot be created from nothingness. I'm, I'm sorry, me. but what did I say before? Yeah. Uh, wait, wait, wait. What did I say? <laughs> what did I explain before? The, uni the sum of the universe is zero. So I'm not saying anything got created. I'm saying that the asymmetry was a... Okay. Are you going to let me finish, sir? Please, please. You're conveying the idea that the sum of the universe is nothing. Yes, that is actually a physical fact. And how do you explain this true. yourself? Hold on, hold on, fella. I happen to be a theist, but I'm going to I'm gonna partially contradict you and partially confirm you here, okay? Um, Weird. It is actually true that it is some total of it is nothing, okay? It's positive and negative energy, and when you cancel it out, and you can do, prove this very quickly with pure classical physics, you know, it, energy is kinetic plus potential, right? Everyone agrees? Potential energy only exists if you exist in a potential field. The universe is not in a potential field, okay? Now, also, in order to have kinetic energy, you have to be moving with respect to something, right? But the problem is, is the universe is not move. It, it can't move with respect to its own reference frame. Therefore, the sum total energy of the universe on the whole is precisely zero. What do you That's, see, uh, how do you account for the physical bodies in the universe? What? There how do you account for the bodies in the universe? There are fluctuations. It's, it's a fluctuation in the vacuum from really? positive and negative. The actual mass of planets is a fluctuation in the universe. Start out that way, yes. Well, allow Sorry, me to more precisely, more precisely. Please quote and give me a link to the bullshit reading. Uh, don't uh, just just re relax, okay. everyone. Relax, you everyone. You guys are a fool. Hold, hold on, hold on, Now, fella, fella, fella. Now I'm going to confirm you. Calm, calm down. Yes, please. Let uh, me right. let me explain. I was going to confirm him, and now he because it's funny because I actually be a theist, and I I I, contra I was confirming the atheist. He didn't like that, but I was going to actually go to the part now where I confirmed him. Okay, oh, according to gone. it doesn't matter. He's he's still watching on okay. on uh, on Blog TV. So continue anyway. Okay. If you take holography, you can demonstrate that the universe had to have a beginning because the space of the universe exists in is a, a Jason. Jason, is, yeah. Jason, Jason, uh, turn off uh, the sound on blog TV or put on some headphones because we are getting feedback from you. And so, and so go, go ahead, Mr. Ratz. I'm sorry. Okay. So given the holographic principle, we know that a given region of space has a – Everything in that space can be defined in a holographic bound. Actually, the space is defined in that holographic bound itself. This means there's a cosmic horizon, okay, and the the bound is actually a the it's sorry a quarter of the boundary is equal to the entropy of the space. Therefore, when the space decreases, when the entropy decreases, the horizon actually decreases as well, and the space shrinks down. And you know this is this happens. You know, going forward in time, this can neatly explain Hubble's law because as time increases, entropy increases, and therefore the holographic horizon increases and the universe expands. If we go backwards, though, at some point, because entropy is always increasing with time, as you go back down to the Big Bang, the, the space vanishes out of existence at some point. The horizon just blinks out and there's no more space. All right. All right. Basin, feedback. Put on some he headphones or turn off the sound or something because we are getting feedback. kind of bad about fellow there. I, 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 I contradicted him and he took it too personally. I was just about he, to confirm he, him. he does that a lot. Well, all I was saying was is that you know we don't have to necessarily know the answer to dismiss the supposed explanation. 
it just it just doesn't work that way we can do that all the time just like i just like in my example you know one thing for you still don't know how they made the trip so fast but you know one thing for sure it wasn't walking speed unless they happen to be sonic the hedgehog or right. goku who can go super saiyan super 4 on us and you know blast at the speed of light it's not going to happen it's not walking speed you know, you still don't know how they made the trip so fast, but you know for one thing, it, was, it wasn't what they're, they're, they weren't walking. That's what I was saying. And he okay. says that that somehow is a, is a fallacy, a straw man, wet, or misrepresentation, whatever he said it. I would like to know how, but unfortunately, he's not here to say it, so I guess I'll shut up about it. Jason, what's up? Jason Burns, you there? I guess not. Jason, are you there? Yeah, so, I guess not. Hello, hello Jason. Jason. Hi, Jason. Hi, Jason. Want to read a Bible verse? Okay. Um. Yeah. You. I. I mean, you haven't been able to fi fix the feedback issue. So until you fix the feedback issue, I'm not letting you back on. We gotta have actual working audio here. And, so now here's. Oh. Am I bring someone else in, or should I? Uh, no, no, no. I, I, I just, I just want to c continue on that. You know, it, as far as the explanation I gave, is there anything wrong with what I said? Anything whatsoever? With um. With the expl with the example I. Oh gave yeah, when... yeah. Because you might just say we don't know. And that's yeah, not exactly. Better. We don't know, but we can still say that hey, you know, your explanation or what you what you gave to me was was told BS. You know, somebody comes up. Oh, how'd you make the three thousand some odd mile trip to here? Oh, I walked and I got here in thirty seconds. Yeah, um, total BS. How'd you really get here? Oh, I went Super Saiyan three on this bitch. It was awesome. You know that that kind of thing. You right. know. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't understand where where exactly I got I went wrong there. But oh well. So, but here's here's the thing. Since uh, my recording space is actually limited, believe it or not, it is limited on my computer because my computer is not as epic as Stripes. I will go ahead and start winding down the show. So if anyone has any final thoughts they would like to throw out, right. otherwise I'm going to turn to Stripe for an after show. That should be should fun. I, should I uh, give my little last argument? Sure. Okay. So we have going backwards in time, entropy. Um, you know, de decreases as you go backward in time, therefore the cosmic horizon decreases and eventually decre going back in time far enough, entropy vanishes to zero by the second law of thermodynamics. And it appears then that the universe blinks out of existence. Now, at this point, we have two basic options. We can either say that space-time is fundamental, and therefore the explanation of the universe is that it just magically blinks into existence in an ex nihilo fashion, you know, William Lane Craig style, or we can say that there is something more, that space-time actually came from something, emerged from something, but that something cannot be in space-time itself. Therefore, whatever space-time is, it's an illusion of whatever it is that it emerged from. And so therefore, either supernaturalism is true, and you've adopted, in a sense, physicalism, because you're saying that the physical universe is fundamental, or you have to jettison physicalism to save naturalism, and you have to say that the world is an illusion. And sets up this very interesting paradox. And the neat thing then is, is even if the world is an illusion, we all know from just first principles that the mind cannot be an illusion. Even if you let your brain into that, you at least know that your mind is existent, which is you know what Descartes was pointing at. So therefore, if we just take that line of reasoning, we can conclude from a combination of science and philosophy that the mind is fundamental, but if physical reality is not fundamental, then that tells you which emerged from which or gives you a good indication of which emerged from which. What do you think of that? Good stuff. Uh, somebody I... else wanted to try in one more time. I'm going to give him one last chance. Uh, right. Jason, did you fix your mic? Jason? Hold on, he might have the mic off for a second just to um, get rid of the feedback, like you suggested. Well, um, well, um, um, I hope you're not offended by it, but I think it's a really important thing to say. I just want to read a Bible verse. Um, oh, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, come on. Dude, your the feedback is still there. I'm sorry. Unless unless I can talk to you, like, legitimately without hearing a crap load of feedback, it's just not happening. Sorry. Oh, one thing I forgot to say. This is kind of cool because this will tie into some of what Ra was thinking. If the universe actually is information at bottom, they emerge from information. Remember in Genesis, not to say you know, take a literal creationist account of it, but if this I, is actually... um, Not to interrupt, but you're kind of throwing a lot of things at us right now. 
Yeah, okay. this is uh, supposed to be the closing, so... Too much to process then. at once. I'll just save it for the episode. Yeah. Yeah, save it yeah. for, for the episode. So, uh, Sam, you're next. Go ahead. I would say that, in sum, if you look first to address his argument, we do not know enough about space-time, and I will leave it to the experts to to where I will understand how the universe came into being. Uh, I am patient and honest enough to say that I am not capable of fully understanding the explanation as it is, as some of them exist now, and I'm willing to wait until an explanation is tenable. I would say that his argument impinges this idea of co- that minds cause things. And we, this presupposes a substance mind dualism. No, because I'm saying to be, it's an to, to, be, to be brief, you will not find a neuroscientist or a neurologist that agrees with him. Hammer off. If I can and, just interrupt, because and, apparently there's some miscommunication here. Jason, I know you're listening on Blog TV. You have feedback on your mic. That's why I had to kick you, because every time you spoke, it went right back into the mic, and we got a horrible echo, horrible screeching, and you just about made my ears bleed. I'm sorry, you have to fix your mic before you can come on the show. Maybe next time, sorry. Sam, go ahead, I apologize. As I was saying, this type of causation is not something that we actually see. We see that the mind is a result of emergent properties of neuronal interactions. But I would say that in general, when forming beliefs, be patient and do not assume that you have a monopoly on the truth, because it is likely that you are wrong the second you assume that. Even if you have specific knowledge in the field, it's important to be humble, and humility is not a sign of weakness in an argument, but instead a sign of intellectual honesty and strength. Do not take an easy answer as the correct answer, because you always have to know what the correct answer is with all of the information. All right, uh, Taldega Tom, you're up. Well, for me, it's pretty simple. I, I I don't need all this crazy math, all the woo woo. Uh, to me, it's uh, I'm a simple a simple guy. If there's God's out there, it should be plain and simple, right in front of us, easy to see, easy to test, um, easy to conclude. And what I see around me is just the opposite. I see nothing but man-made confusion over various ideas of what God is, what God isn't, what's the right belief, what's the wrong belief, what God told me personally, and uh, there's just too many inconsistencies to credit an uh, all-powerful, all-loving being that actually gives a damn about us. It just doesn't look that way. And to me, it's very simple. You can can spin it and justify God in any way possible. Every religion does it. But but in the end, there's just nothing there. I just don't see it. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Raw5069, you're up. Uh, Final statements, final replies, whatever. Uh, Damn it, Jason. No. Fix your mic first. (laughs) All right. Go ahead, Raw. It's all yours. Yeah, I, first of all, I just wanted to say thanks, man, for having me on. Uh, it was, uh, it was, it was fun. So uh, that's really all I have to say. Uh, from a cre- creationist point of view, I will say this: uh, the world was created with words and entered into existence by words. According to the scriptures in the New Testament, we have to enter into the kingdom of God by words, the words of our own mouth. We have to humble ourselves and ask. For ask for forgiveness that's all i want to say thanks thanks again for having me on yeah, thank you very, very much and let me see if i can uh make some room here talladega you can stay stay here let me see if we can actually get this guy on hang on one second let me just something happened him. yep hang on no no i no that's it shows over but i want to hear here's something first damn it jason don't you understand that it's because your mic has feedback it's it's making my ears bleed. That's why. So can what what do you want? What do you need at this point? Show's over. Show's over. Hello. Hello. Hi, this is Jay. I hope you're okay. Hang on. Listen. Hey. Listen, with you. listen, everyone. I want you all to hear this. All right. Did anyone hear that feedback? Pragmatic yeah. heard it. There's feedback. So, Jason, if you say I'm lying, I advise you to please review the recording, and that way you will know that it was in fact that you have feedback and not that we're atheists that are lying. Yes, sir. There's the feedback again. So, thank you. So, There's the feedback again. Thank you very much. That's it. Prove the point. Good night, everyone.
Peace out. Thank you, Blog TV, for as long as you existed. This is awesome. Booyah, it's over. Peace out.